Okay, welcome back. Episode 17. Yes, sir. This is going to be a hybrid episode. Um, Spawn, who was on previously, gave me a call and wanted to talk uh, Star Wars. And I figure for a reach, um, it can be a horror story. Uh, definitely to a lot of the fans of what it's become. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> you use it as a double meaning, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So today we got Spawn, Joe, and Vito. Co-producer Anderson, B. Cox. Sir. My first memories was like mom coming home with like the Luke Skywalker action figure that she found on the train. It didn't have the lightsaber built inside, but I was hooked. And ever since then, that was like got to be like 78, right. 79. And I, you know, I had the whole Kenner action figures up to like 83 or whatever, 84. And I was, just, I've been hooked since. I mean, it just became like a passion. So sometimes I get too emotional about it. Sometimes. I just, it's like a bad relationship where I'm like, fuck it, I'm done with that shit. And then I just keep coming back. It's like crack to me, you know what I mean? I just love me some Star Wars, you know? So how about y'all? Yeah, been- same, same. I think my earliest memory on Earth right. is the fucking Star Wars figures. Right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the earliest memory for sure is Star Wars figures. Right. Um, Luke Skywalker, of course. Right. For me, it's the lightsaber in the arm thing. Lightsaber in the arm, Obi-Wan. You know? and, and, and it's... At least for me, I mean that was the basis of my childhood was the Star Wars right. toys. Like all all my play was based That's on for Star any Wars. Any '80s child, and, yeah. and, and right. yeah, it, it, yeah. So so I mean, and then also another point that I want to bring up is like we're gonna be talking on all these films, right? Here, but I love everything about Star Wars, so that that's kind of the right. That, that's the that's so even the, if I'm hard on it, I yeah. love it. It's like yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. even what even what I say I hate, I still actually love. Yeah. What, what was that uh, term that you used about the pizza and the... Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Star Wars is, is, is like pizza and sex. It's, right. Even when it's shitty, it's good. Even when it's shitty, it's good. Right, right. right. Well, for me, legend has it supposedly because they couldn't find a babysitter. Uh, my folks took me to go see Star Wars because Pops wanted to go see it. <laughs> so, you know, I was in the late 70s, you know. Right. Just make do with that. But, I, you know, my, my childhood was, yeah, getting the action figures. You know what I right. mean? I had Luke Sky from Empire. I had... Um, Vader and Obi Wan from New Hope. Right. You know, I had the Millennium Falcon, X Wing. I had all, you know, a lot of dudes. You know, so to me, that was my childhood first and for- foremost. You right. know, so I do. I like. I said, I love it. Um, so like Joe, know that I love it. Whatever I critique is out of love. Yeah, exactly. Right. Me as right. well. And as a kid growing up, um, I remember, I remember going to see Empire and Return of the Jedi. Right. Um, and then Star Wars probably vhs at that point yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but i do remember i got memories of early morning weekends i had uh return of the jedi on vhs and i would pop it in in the morning and eat breakfast and you know um and then i got into a new hope a little right. bit older you know but four five and six that's all that's that's, that's all potential. Me, you know yeah, what i mean that, that, but, that's the foundation right exactly um but i'm not close-minded to all the others that came out but i do have my opinion on those right. um and we're gonna yeah, cover so- and I'll All tell you, that. And if I can interject real quick, and I'll tell you why, that was part of an era that will never be duplicated. Right. Like when you Star think, Wars. When you, here, here's, a, here, here's the thing: Star Wars gave us the '80s, and I'll t- tell you know I'll tell you what I mean by that. That set the eighty early '80s anyway. That set the foundation. That that set the standard. You had the toys. You had the cereal. You had right. the cartoons. And I'm talking about droids. You had the two Ewok movies that were on TV. All the kids was rocking Star Wars. I remember right. friends having the Darth Vader. Mass with action figures inside. Yep, that, I had that and the three people. You one. had the comic uh, books. So I mean, all that goes in there with the music, MTV, well, Saturday morning. T- I mean, and all about, the other I'm, I'm toy franchises about, like GI Joe well, and Thundercats. Pop- they all took the template, took with the exception model, of yeah. the movie, but all took the template of the action figures and you know marketing towards the kids. And I mean, they took all of it, and it was all because of the Genesis. With Eight, Star basically, Wars. Star Wars is the beginning of '80s pop culture moving forward. So, so that's why these movies are are judged a little differently, because they were at the forefront of that era, and also held to a higher standard. That's why we're so hard on the new. Well, we grew we grew up on that, so that's why I mean I love the prequels and I love the sequels, but it's just different. I think, the, and if I may interject, say this real quick, I think the prequels came closest to that because I felt the early two thousands were probably the closest we'll get to a revival of the early eighties. Mm. But that's just my well, opinion. However, okay. again, though. Like you see, here's proof of this. <laughs> no, but here's but here, but here, check this out. That's proof of that though. 
no matter what, nothing will beat the original because of what we grew up in. That you had to live in that era. That's just magic right there. Magic. It's like a heroin addict. It's yeah. like a heroin addict. You'll never duplicate You're chasing it. that first high. There you go. That's a good point. So Atta speaking boy. of the first high. All right, so then in like 98, me and my buddy Joby was working together and he used to get the Star Wars magazines or whatever yeah, what they were. I was all and they were like pumping, it. they were pumping like, you know, Phantom Menace. I don't even think it had a title yet. I think it was just called Episode yeah. One. And we were just like salivating, waiting for this shit to come out. And then we saw it. And uh, yeah, there was rumors in that magazine that Morgan Freeman was actually going to yeah. be playing Qui Gon Jinn. Right, right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, I, we had heard all kinds of rumors. Uh, we weren't sure how long. Remember, we didn't show how far back they were going to go um, in terms of the story. We knew yeah. that Obi Wan was going to be like in his middle twenties or whatever. Um, but we, it was just so much mystery because there was the internet was around, but it was it didn't have yeah, the spoilers like it, like it does today. And uh, I remember when I saw Phantom Menace the first time in 1999. I loved it. When I first saw it, I loved it in the theater. I had a blast. I remember loving it until I got the VHS at home. And then that's when it all kind of fell apart. You know what I'm saying? Because we're talking Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace. Okay. okay so let's backtrack. So I'm talking Phantom Menace. We're starting it, at the beginning right now. Starting at the beginning. So we're going to okay. go from one all the way Chronologically, to. Chronologically, yes. the beginning. So you get so, it home. So we get it home, and that's when you start. That sucks. Uh, if I hear Jar Jar Binks' voice one more motherfucking time. I'm gonna shoot everyone around me type <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Me so uh, sorry. <laughs> you know the 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 guy and just the stupidness. And then like some people will say, you know what? It's supposed to be a kids movie. I'm like, well then why do they have all this boring political talk in between? And then I just felt that I just don't like Phantom Menace so much because they felt like they ruined a lot of resources that they had. Like they had Terrence Stamp in this motherfucker. They had General Zod and they did nothing with my dude. Nothing with General well, Zod. Well, Superman wasn't in it. Who's he going to fucking fight? Oh, come on now. You know what I'm saying, though. Chancellor of uh, 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 Chancellor Valorum. And it was just like so dra. It'll go from super dumb shit, kid stuff with the Jar Jar and like the Gungans. And then it'll get into this drab English, British uh, political thing. And then like they would have like two killer scenes. And that's all I have for Phantom Menace. I think what Spawn is saying that he needed Kal Al to make that movie work for him. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Um, I, I agree with you. So on that, you grew to you grew to to hate it, not right. hate it, I but you grew to dislike it a little right. bit. So it's like okay, so it's like a dude that was in jail for like 16 years, didn't get no ass for 16 years. He got <laughs> ass for the first time. It was like, oh, this is the best. Then he moves in with the chick, and then all of a sudden, like her feet stink, and then like she has like a crooked eye, and that's my take on Phantom if Menace. If he didn't like, see the I, bitch was busted from the get-go, that's his bad. Hey, he got out of, he got out of a 16-year bid. You never know what's going to happen. But do you, you know? give any of it a pass? Oh, absolutely. Just... I give a lot of it a pass. Um, like I said, the the I like the pod racing thing. A lot of people hate it. Um, I love the Darth Maul character. I thought he was the... the I, I remember thinking that he was going to be the main villain of the franchise and it was going to come down... In, in, in my mind, I hyped it. So Shouldn't have went out like that, but go yeah, ahead. I thought that Anakin and, and Maul were going to you know, it was gonna, right. he was going to take his place by Anakin fighting Maul. I said, it, it, I you know, I already had it quarterbacked in my mind. You know what I'm saying? So I give it a lot of past cinema. Cinematography is beautiful. Uh, the new different worlds that we finally got to see in Star Wars was very interesting. Yep. The Jedi Council was interesting. Like I was like, okay, I could dig it. I've always imagined it, and it's kind of how I look, but I not as in a sky rise. But it it, it you know it, it, it satisfied. There was some satisfying parts. Sure. You know what about you? I don't know, same boat. Um, well, a little bit different. So I loved it for a long time. Um, I hated Jar Jar, just like everybody else. Right. That was the the one takeaway was as soon as you left the theater, it was like fucking Jar Jar. Right. You know, it was just like why they put this character in there. And I'm gonna talk in a bit of why I like Jar Jar now, and that um, okay. on record, and this is gonna be on the internet. So My I man. like Jar Jar now. So. When I first, I saw it 21 times in the theater, I kept all the tickets. I used to have right. this Darth Vader poster when I was living with my mom, and I put all the tickets around. I still got all the tickets in a plastic bag somewhere in my ah, comic book. That's books. dope. That's dope. So I would, you know, after, after you know, I was going to Santa Ana College after, after school, I would right. go to Santa Ana College and watch it again. So I got the movie theater experience of it, and I, I dug it because, dude, I mean, 
it's like you're saying, you know, you've been, it's been so long, you get all this pent up demand, right. and then you see, you're like, yes, like yep. this, this is it, this is it, Star Wars. Right. So the first thing off the bat, and my first impressions were the special effects were out of this fucking Absolutely. world. Absolutely. Like I hadn't been blown away like that since Jurassic Park. The first Jurassic Park came out, you know, which still holds up. But it go ahead. still holds up. Yeah, that scene where he takes his hat off and he gets out of the jeep sure. and he sees that brontosaurus. I mean, that, I get go- look, I got goosebumps right now <laughs> just thinking about it. And it was the same thing with Phantom Menace is uh, Naboo. You know, yep. going back to Tatooine, right? Uh, seeing that protocol droid when it first opens up, and there's a protocol droid, that's a silver three PO, and you're like, "Oh shit! Okay, right. this is fucking Star Wars, yep. right?" Like yep. the Jedi's looked how you imagined it, yep. like all of it met all these expectations, right? And I loved it, but I did feel, hmm, there's something not quite right with the movie, and I don't know what it is, but I still love it. So anyway, long story short. I I get to the end, watch the movies, get it on 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 VHS, and it's it's probably three or four years after. Maybe this is about maybe Attack of the Clones that come out at this right. point. Looking back at Phantom Menace, like man, it it kind of wasn't that good, right. you know. And then years later, now I'm back. I I I am a fan of a Phantom Menace now, but Attaboy. we'll talk we'll talk about that once we get to the to the sequels a, okay. a little bit more. Okay. But, Me so check this out. All right. The like fan I was, of Phantom Menace. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a huge Phantom Menace fan. However, that being said, I was angry with that fucking movie when it came out. So, so you're the opposite of it. Well, he checked this out. So for two years, I was hyped, right? Got my ticket. I remember going to Midnight Showing with my homies and stuff. That was us. And yeah, I was like, I walked out like, what the fuck was that? How does this even connect? Really? I, I, I was pissed. I was like, I, I did a Midnight Showing for this shit. I stand around with a bunch of fucking weirdos for this. I was pissed. Now, that being said, now, this has always been my relationship with uh, prequels and sequels, however, mm. though. So, like you, I bought the VHS when it came out. I want to say, what, April of 2000, maybe 2001? Because it took a little bit for it to come out. I VHS. thought it came out in, like, the end of 99 for some no, reason. No, no, no. Yeah, it did. No, it, it did, did come out the end of 99. Okay. Yeah. 99. It's January. Uh, I yeah, said yeah. corrected. So, when I got right it. Christmas. Yep. So, the collector in me, I bought it, started to rewatch it. The more I started to rewatch it, the more I started to get it. And then when Attack of the Clones came out, before we jump ahead... Then I really appreciated Phantom Menace for what it is. Um, the cinematography was to me the best thus far. The the sword play between Darth Maul, Qui Gon Jinn, and Obi Wan is the standard. Absolutely. Um, I always and I agree with E. The pod races were cool. Um, I know a lot of people didn't like Jar Jar Binks. I was cool with it. Mm. I had and I'll tell you why. That's like saying what? I was cool with syphilis. It's I mean this is you know this is a little something something. I mean you live right. <laughs> well, here's the thing though. How do you like Dark Crystal or anything from the 80s that's like that and not like Jar Jar? I get it. We okay. didn't have C-3PO and R2-D2 as a comic relief, but we had Jar Jar. Was it everybody's cup of taste? No, it wasn't. I mean, I didn't see him as the detractor of the film. It wasn't like he Ooh. ruined the whole fucking movie because, you know what? I had Obi-Wan. I had Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon, way more outbalanced anything that Jar Jar could have done because he was played that cool. I could, I Darth could see Maul that. Darth Maul was dope. Um, I just didn't like the fact that a lot of the aliens spoke English where I knew in the original trilogy... They had different languages. That's so a good I, point. So That's a great I, point, actually. So there were little things that I nitpicked. And again, I love Star Wars. So it's just the fan in me can never be fully satisfied as an adult. As I Now, if I was a kid, I probably would have been cool with it. I think where you where you talk about the language on that, that's where the Jar Jar comes in. The fact that his language is so weird, so whatever. And they're leaving the the species in the, the pig yeah. Latin shit. And the fact that they put it in the whole movie. Yeah, right. Whatever, it's where it ruined it for me. So I, I agree. A little bit, but don't have him speaking so much. So, so uh, you know what? If... If Jar Jar didn't have that baby talk, I think a lot of people would have loved Jar Jar's character off right. the bat. Like, they wouldn't have hated him as much as it was the baby talk that I think just right. killed it. Right. But yeah. you know what that's, part, whole, that's that, part of his charm, though? That's, that's that was not, no that's charm. That was not no charm. <laughs> there was no that charm to that. How could there be charm? You know, what do you think, Mike? What's yeah. your deal on Phantom? Uh, like, uh, man. Be um, honest, bro. You, be honest. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't like it. To me, um, it looked too crisp. Mm. Um, the separation you almost wanted to not give them that budget and maybe it would have been more along the lines of dingy and dirty the you know the way uh, right. new hope was and in, in, so, in that world r- real quick on that so what i what i heard in that, one of those magazines is that it, that was on purpose because you could see so the because the clone wars took its toll on the galaxy to the point where it got to that dirtiness well that's so that's, that's what fair. i had thought but they didn't convey that maybe you no, know. I didn't think so, and I, I definitely didn't think Darth Maul should have or would have went out like that. Right. Um, so I had an issue with that. Jar Jar, I mean, that goes without speaking. I, I, 
Spoilers. He doesn't get a pass right. from me. He didn't go out like that. Spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see, I'm not that yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah. So what happened to him then? So uh, in the Clone Wars cartoon, it's a cartoon show that takes place between uh, episode, episode two, and three. Three, two and three. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot more Darth Maul and, and what happens to him. So, so, but from when we first saw one, oh, did we? Is that how he went out? Yes. Or did we already know? Yeah, we thought he was. We thought he was dead. Right. And we at that he time, got, we thought I he got the Boba Fett pissed. treatment, where it was like this really cool character, and then he kind of went out. And right. you know, just just to build on that, when I you know, like I said earlier, I didn't know where this was going. It's like I had all these characters, and the only ones I could relate to was honestly Obi Wan. Like, even Anakin was foreign to me. I knew Anakin was going to be in it. Right. The how the character was portrayed. And this is not a knock in the movie itself. It just wasn't relatable because in your mind, and this is for any fan out there, as you know, our imaginations after so long, you we build it up to what it is that we want to see certain things that obviously you can only fit so much in a two-hour movie. You know, and again, when you see the very first episode of, of what's supposed to be a nine-episode um, series, I walked away thinking, how the fuck does this even connect? Without, right. without giving us proper credence. Um, and I think that's kind of the challenge when you do something like that. Like, how does this connect? But you also have to start at ground zero to say it has to start with point A. You guys already were in the middle part of the alphabet when this started. So it's kind of hard to see so let me ask you, the letters so in between. What did you guys think about Anakin Skywalker's portrayal in, in, in that? Because me, I wanted Damien the Omen child. I was I was hoping for like a, like a, a scarred little kid or something to that effect. You know, like even like there's a part where he 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 stands up for Jar Jar when the uh, Jar Jar's about to get his ass whipped for hitting the guy with like the space fish or whatever, and uh, he goes, you know, he starts talking in their own language. He says, "Look out, there's some, you know, they're big outlanders, etc." But I was hoping maybe he like force choke him or something like that. No, you know what I'm saying? Like a little something though, like that. Because you know, no, and I'm just talking about as a fan. But I'm because of about. Darth Vader, because of the, the this is how huge Darth Vader is. But, but look at uh, Baby Yoda. The spoilers for later on. He's he's a kid and he's already kind of choking okay, out his girl. But, so I was hoping something like that. I Agreed. At, at that time, so you can see a little bit of the darkness because no one, you know, like it's not overnight, right? People are uh, they sometimes there's something off that they're born with, but you also uh, forget, the though, to, you, know, you know, but to, if I may interject real quick, you also forget Obi Wan spoke highly of Anakin in New Hope. Anakin was a champion, and again, he fell to the dark side. Does yeah, I mean, but, you're born, but but look what he did with the storm, what he, what he, uh, to jump ahead, he look what he did to the sand people. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, we'll, Obi Wan we'll, didn't know about that. But we'll get so to that. So, no, no, we'll, no so, and we'll get to that. But he was still a kid. Kids are innocent. Right, but I was. I just. I'm telling you what I wanted. I wanted Damien the Omen Child. That's I thought the saying. innocence. And I'll jump on that. It, the, there's a good contrast from his innocence to him. You know, falling to become right. exactly. Vader. And I was okay with that. I mean, that kind of gets a pass from me. Right. But the yippee and the wee. And that's just you know, kids don't even talk like that. And so, why are they gonna talk like that in the space world? You no, know what okay. I mean? but, All right, to, to reply to that okay, directly okay. is the reason that I went from hating Phantom Menace to loving Phantom Menace is that okay, my kids hate all things Star Wars. Oh, yeah, it's it's sad, it's heartbreaking, Ouch. but it might what be because I love for it. that man. Yeah. Damn. It might be because I love it so much that they oh yeah they reject know, they, they reject it you right. know because your dad like, your dad actually tell you on that because my son. Yeah. Star Wars. See, yeah. and like it's my just, son, that's how my son it, is with wrestling. He doesn't like it, watch wrestling, and I love wrestling because it's a dad it, thing. Right. Dad thinks yeah, it's yeah. cool, so it's exactly. not cool. That's right. exactly so. So, you know, w exposing them to Star Wars, you know, I kind of I didn't want to kill the big reveals in four, five, and six. Right. right? There's a lot of reveals, and we'll talk about them when we get there. But I, I started them with four, five, six, and I think that's what kind of they just didn't get it. So then, of course, I was like, okay, well, you guys don't care anyway, so I'll go back and watch the other ones. Right. And they never paid attention. Like, Empire Strikes Back, like, I thought they'd be into it. You know, right. Yoda, like, you know, I thought they'd be into it, you know. But when we went back and, and put Phantom Menace in, mm -hmm. they were quiet when Jar Jar came on. Oh. And I'm like, what the heck? And yeah. they start watching it, right? And then they're sitting there. They're in the Jar Jar. Right. They're like, who's that silly guy? Like, who's that yeah. silly guy, right? And then Anakin shows up, right? right? And he's this little kid. So first of all... Both of my girls, right? They love Padme because she's like this glam princess, right, right? Right, right. And then Jar Jar, and then um, Anakin, right. and all of a sudden, my kids were like, "Oh!" And they sat and watched it all the way through. Like, who's that devil guy? Who you know? Like, and they right. were into it. See, my son was you the, see the opposite. You see the genius of it, I right? See the but genius. my son was the opposite. He didn't like that shit. Maybe because so, I hated it, so, and he was trying to be with dad because I hated 
the Jar Jar, and he it, saw it, my. See, for me, it flipped the switch. It was like right. fucking Lucas knew what the fuck he was doing. There you go. Because it was for kids. He, he knew. But it then, was what for about kids. the stuff where the, all the political stuff? Came That's in. for us. Well, okay, we're gonna. Okay. okay, we're gonna get. And we're <laughs> that gonna. Shit was for us. All right, all right, we're gonna right, get into sorry. that when we get done with three. We're gonna recap the prequels, and I'll get into that because you know my take on that. We'll go Attack of the Clones then. Ugh. Okay, so this one I didn't know was so polarizing because for years I had nothing but love for Attack of the Clones. Really? And I, I, I hated that movie. I didn't know that because when I went to the theater with my buddy, you know, Steve White, we went to go catch it. We saw the midnight showing. And then I remember the audience going ape shit for when Yoda came out. Yeah, for sure. I remember the audience going ape shit with that was the, a big, dopest scene. Uh, the Jedi fight. Yeah, all um, the Jedi for sure. Yeah, all the Jedis. So I remember just off the uh, audience and then like I remember seeing it with people. Um, I saw it like in the theater like three or four times. People going ape shit each time. So I just based it off what the audience is feeling. So if the audience is going crazy, I'm thinking, you know, it's shit is a smash. And then so when I got the DVD at home, I broke it down. And of course, yeah, the thing that, uh, that but real quick, I'm going to go back. The thing that pisses me off the most about Phantom Menace is that it came off so cheesy that supposedly, now this is just hearsay, that uh, Leonardo was supposed to play teenage to early 20s uh, Anakin. And since, you know, with all that Jar Jar and all the, the bad dialogue from Phantom Menace, Leo was like, man, fuck that shit. I ain't doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? So that pissed me off as a fan because could, he could have pulled off that wooden, yeah. weird dialogue that George Lucas would have provided him. Right. Now, you got someone just as wooden as the dialogue that you're provided. Like, he would have brought something to it. Then it, it would work. It would have worked. Right. And know, unfortunately, it, Hayden, uh, you know, like I always make fun of the Skywalkers. I said, they're just so whiny. Like, even Luke was whiny. And like, you know, it's not fair. I should be as good as Obi-Wan. And it's not fair. You know what I'm saying? So, but bear in mind, though, okay, with Lucas, though, these were based on the old 1930 serial films that used to come out. So there was a, an inherent cheesiness factor because it was playing in his mind of what he used to watch as a kid. Mm. You know, the prequels, how I think you see the prequels are, is, well, we, he sees life in the early 1900s, 1930s, 1940s. There was a certain elegance and innocence in that. It right. didn't play to the to the um, the original trilogy. That was more for us. Right. And, and to a certain degree. And there was, and in any of the Star Wars films, there's always a small amount of her- inherent cheesiness because of how the template is that you have to accept. That's what I mean, makes I don't Star see, Wars Star I, I Wars. didn't see that like in some of them. The, the, the stronger ones, I don't see that. But r- real quick, let me just give my positives and negatives of uh episode two so i love like i said the jedi fight scene it was kind of like the uh gladiator movies and like jedis are kind of like like religious people like it, it gave me like a defeating the the christians to the lions type vibe when they had them and the monsters came out i dug that um uh count dooku the whole storyline he, he was amazing i love dooku and i love uh him as um Dracula and everything, you know, uh, Christopher Lee's the man. Um, so to have him in there, I was like, oh shit. And he just killed it in uh, Lord of the Rings a few years earlier. So I was, I was there. And then, um, they're actually uh, running consecutively Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. They were both out the same time. I thought time. they were already done. I thought they no, did all three of them. At the same no, time. no, no. But anyway, um, so then Django Fett was cool. Bubba Fett, I didn't need to see him. I, I just, that kind of, the Bubba Fett was my favorite character for years. And we always make fun of it, like, you know, da, fire, get him. Uh, uh, Kim, da, fire. <laughs> you know, like, it's just, uh, it just pissed me off that Crunchy they wrote corny, him. yeah. yeah. Just... Like, not everyone needs to be scarred. He could have just been an evil dude uh, or a dope bounty hunter like the other Mandalorians. It will get, you know, but uh, it just, it, that kind of killed it for me. But again, the cinematography, the way it looked, um, it looked beautiful. Like I, I love the 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 city. Like when Anakin jumps onto the little bo- um thing and he's hanging on. I dug all that shit. I I I, I didn't know because uh, me and Vito we have a podcast that we do. It's called Smeal Mainly. Shout out! We'll, shout out to Smeal Mainly, T Diddy, Magnum, Nux, the Middle then, God. Um. So when we when I was doing the research for that, I didn't know that Attack of the Clones was so hated, and that oh, yeah. kind of threw me off because I enjoy that one. You know what I'm saying? I know I know you hate it the most. Um oh you hate it the yeah, most? So yeah, so I don't it's my least favorite Star Wars flick. Um You know, when I first saw it, it's just like anything else, that pent up demand and I loved it and as the years go by it just it keeps progressively getting worse. It's just the decisions that were made in that movie were they just weren't good. Like what? Like what? Like what? Like okay, so the, first of all, Obi-Wan's a mullet Okay. <laughs> so as soon as soon, so it's now when I watch it, and as soon as that elevator scene shows up, it's like, 
what is with the hair? Like, what is with the hair? Well, that's you so don't, dope. You don't no, it was not bullets. dope. It was not dope. The the other big mistakes in it were, uh, so so Dooku is kind of just thrown in there, like right. He it, you don't know what you know, okay. You kind of know that he was Qui Gon's master, sort right. of. But right, right. All of a sudden, he's just there, and like he's he's now running the show. That he's some political idealist, right? And and then from there, the 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 romance scenes that, just that was that, that was. The execution the, on that was horrible. It was terrible. The, the, so here's here's a movie where I, I find the special effects are deteriorating over time. Mm. I agree is, with you. Is basically anything that takes place in Geonosis past the gladiator right. execution scene, the special effects just keep Looking every like year that I game. watch it. Yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a bad video game. It's, it actually looks like a PS2 when, uh, game to be honest with you in some scenes because right. of the CGI. Those graphics were terrible. And I think yeah, it's the, because that was what the first he did full on digital. They weren't doing they, they weren't using film. And again, this is stuff he was pioneering because I think he was that form. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that format it was going to be introduced to everybody else. But he was going to spearhead that right to go from film to digital. But that's no excuse that, okay. though. I mean, I understand why it's like that, but come on, why you take it? It's like. Right, Sorry, right. Well, I, got the, I agree. You, yeah. see, you see the limitations of being the pioneer in that. Like, like I agree with you wholeheartedly because I've seen it recently too. Against like, oh yeah, like because the CGI is too smooth, too clean. Because again, the poly, what they had to use, they couldn't do a lot of techniques they use now, and you could see the limitations of right. that. Right. Okay. Um, anything more to interject on on that one? Uh, no, and it's just that it it, it so I, the only only last thing is I popped like crazy when Yoda. Right, and I'm gonna get a, yeah, went gonna get from from Kane. Right to kung fu so, let me, and back to Kane again. Like that's right. one of the greatest things ever. See, that's one of the things right. I despise. Yeah, I oh, despise oh, him. Oh, now now I despise. That's him. He's, he's hard gonna as fuck. come. He's gonna come limping in and then start bouncing off. Oh, walls, I love right? that shit. And that's then the limp thought. away. That's the, right? force. that's the thing. I mean, is the force. Just, he only uses what he needs. He only uses what he needs. And I get it, but it's so cringy to watch it now. I, I, I don't, actually thought that was more internet because everybody was talking about it prior to that. Oh, Yoda's gonna fight. Whatever. Like they were bringing that up. So I thought they might have added that just for internet. Like, you know what I mean? The people are talking about it so much. Right. That you kind of got to add Yoda to it now. That I, I just remember the, uh, the audience. I'm going off oh, of the, the audience. audience yeah. And the audience went ape shit. I went ape shit. I went ape and, shit. And, and I thought so, it was dope. Um, dope as fuck. Yeah, because the thing is, is that I, rem- I remember that some... I was watching like Fox 11 News and it was the, it wasn't the night it was going to come out. It was like the, you know, the world premiere news, right? or whatever. And... Um, and then, so she fucking spoiled. They were like, "Oh, Yoda gets busy in this one." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, you fucking bitch!" You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then, so I, I see them doing the little force lightning, and I'm cool. I'm like, "All right, cool." But then when I saw Yoda break out the lightsaber, I was like, "Oh shit, okay, she didn't kill it." You know, real but quick too, the, that. the contrast from Jake Lloyd to Vader, I can buy uh, over Hayden right. to Vader. That's another issue I think I had with the second one. Right, um, the whininess. Yeah, right. no, I, I just I couldn't. But do that's it. a Skywalker trait, I think, more than an actor trait. I think the Skywalkers are just whiny. Yeah, that's fair. You know? Well, look at no Lucas. Has, Power converters. No, Lucas said yeah. that teenagers... And then like Kylo is just bitchy. Yeah, you know? Kylo. Yeah. No, that's oh, a Skywalker. Yeah. It's not only a Skywalker trait, but Lucas when he was developing it, he said, you know, and again, he was bitchy as a teenager. You know, you know, he's from the older generation. He said teenagers are you know whiny, and so he kind of just did that. And again, too, you have to work in the format that he. Look at the films for which the format they were designed for. Again, 1930 serials are not going to be what we expect. They're, they're, it's a very distinct and specific way it's shot. My Now, I agree with Joe. Attack of Clones is my least favorite for different reasons. Um, so when all the Jedi have that Royal Rumble... That was dope. How are they getting their ass kicked and not using the Force? Like, these are supposed to be the badass motherfuckers. Right. And let me just use my... You know, lightsaber. Dude, I'll be pushing motherfuckers away. I'll be crushing things now. Unless... Oh, especially those robots. Those robots are the least intimidating yeah, things in Star Wars history. Well, the... Roger, Roger. But it's how they got it. It's how they got it. I'm around okay the, with the, the PG-13. Right. But see, I'm okay with it because that goes back to the Flash Gordon roots. Now, that being said, didn't really do a good job explaining why Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin couldn't really use the Force to break free of themselves. Yet when they, the Jedi came, they were good to go. Now, was there something that that, that hindered the Force using ability? I don't know. Um, the romance aspect of it, cheesy, but it was more like Gone with the Wind. So I could see what he was trying to He was trying to mm. mess different genres. No, it wasn't. Pro- Gone with the Wind is a classic. I'm not. Oh, I didn't say classic. he did it right. I didn't say he did it right. I'm just saying you could see what he was trying to do. It was so fucking awkward. Oh, yeah, you awkward. could see what he was, was trying to was. do, it but was. what it, it is. Ex- they had None. no chemistry. None. Right. Oh, right. I agree. I'm not just, oh, I'm not disagreeing with any of that, but you could see what he took many different genres. And the problem with Clash of Clones, it was a very important movie because he had to do a lot of things to set up what's going on. And, you know, with Lucas, it's Exposition, scenes only get 
30 seconds to a minute and a half because the films are packed with information. A lot of information. He packs a lot of things in these films, and you, you could see that was maybe the weakest part of Attack of the Clones. There's no real development. you got to keep moving, 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 moving. You go from you know the, the bombing in the beginning to a love story at the end, and you had all these things going on. You had, I mean, the information is dope, and I like what he was going with it. It's just you pack so much information in a two-hour movie, you're not going to get everything. You know, you're not going to get what you want to get out of it. I do agree with you in terms of the chemistry between Padme and Anakin. Um, but it is important, though. You needed that to see how things are going to come. Right, but it, the execution was just Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah no, no, I'm not. And I'll always agree with you. Execution. Yes, do I like, like okay, I Do like, I like, like the Okay, film? so look at the little. Okay, so look what he did. Well, actually, it was er, uh, Erwin Kirschner. But look what he did in those little. They were like not even five minute scenes. Then you gave. Anakin and Padme like 10 minutes and there was no chemistry to like little bits of chemistry with Han Solo and Leia and Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher little tiny bits but it also like, goes back to the editing though we you and I also talked yeah, about yeah, this yeah 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 but have, I'm just saying the same just, people to help with it yeah, editing but, and all that so I, I but think still the, the chemistry is chemistry the oh, chemistry agree, is yeah. chemistry because because yeah. Solo was smashing that in real life like Harrison Ford was smashing Carrie Fisher right right in real life <laughs> and that's yeah. where the chemistry I read, came I read from. that book you read her yeah, book yeah yeah that's like I mean that's where that's I really was where where that yeah, that, see, comes I from. blame Natalie Portman. She should have gave the she ass did. to Hayden. Then, you know. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I, yeah she, wasn't, she wasn't giving him any Black Swan that day. <laughs> but um, no, you know what? It's an important movie. My least favorite, but it needed to ha- that movie needed to happen again. Execution. Did you see that midnight? There. Did you see it at midnight or? I saw it the day after. Okay. Uh, and I was kind of glad I was. The theater wasn't too packed, and when I saw, it, I was like, okay, I'm cool. And you know, what did you think initially, though? So here's what's funny. Like Phantom. I was angry at that movie. Wow. I was mad. Yeah. And I went back yeah. to watch Phantom. And that's when the love affair with Phantom started to rise. Really? And for years, I was mad at um, Attack of the Clones. It's a very important movie. I like key scenes in there. My least favorite. I still watch it on my own. Don't get me wrong. But it's one I won't go to as much. Um, and it's the only movie where I like it. But like the prequels and other films in the prequels and sequels series, I don't. the love for it did not come like it did for the other ones. But I recognize it is a very significant movie. You need that movie. It's just not perfect. Okay, so a lot of people, like uh, my buddies, it was kind of like Fairweather Star Wars fans, they hate the title because it sounds oh, very okay. 1950s. Okay, Fairweather fans don't get to say. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just saying. They're like, it sounds like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, you know okay, what I mean? This is, okay, it, now this is why Fairweather fans don't get a fucking say in this shit. But I'm just saying, that, that, you know, just think about it. I think the title was, was I think, it, it, uh, titles are important. Well, the fun, so yeah, Attack you, of the Clones. Remember Jim Rome? Jim Rome used to call his fans clones, right? When they announced that title, uh, the, the movie's going to be Attack of the Clones, uh, the, it was the greatest show of Jim Rome was that day because dude yeah. all there was so much prank and Star Wars Attack of the Clones that were calling <laughs> it on that go back and listen to those episodes if you, you get a chance so I just I, I just think the title kind of worked as, I don't know I, ah, maybe, I don't know I'm, nah, just, nah, I'm nah, reaching fine, I guess dude. I don't know I don't know title's fine alright Spawn let's kick it off for the episode 3 now so my favorite of the prequel trilogy is everyone's it's, it's in my top 3 of all Star Wars lore is Revenge of the Sith. Like I know the acting's bad. Um, and there's a lot of problems with it, but I just love the transformation of the fact that I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that I just saw Vader for the first time. But that fight scene, if that's not the most emotional, most yeah. intense fight scene of the whole franchise, I don't give a fuck with no. It is the most says. emotional fight scene. You know, say like you, you know, like you ever got a fight with your buddy or your brother, and that's always the most. You, know, you got all that pent up shit, and y'all just you know going at it type shit. And when he Cousin. screamed, "I hate you!" That he did, right. he did very well in that yeah, scene. I thought, right. you know what I mean? I thought so too. And, Good job, uh, Lucas, on that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I love that one. I could watch that one over and over and over. Um, the opening scene um, that, that was very Star Wars, just, you know, they gave us the, the the ships and they gave us all that shit. They, the, the whole mantra, they they just room right, right away. Um, you see them uh, when they kill Count Dooku right off the bat. I mean, I was just, I was, yeah, I was shocked by that Shocking. Too. Right. Shocking. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It was the first one that was ever PG-13. Revenge of the Sith was. So, I mean, it's just, to me, I, I wouldn't call it perfect, but as a fan and what I like, I, I just dig it. I, I can, thought it was I the most to... emotional, to be honest with you. Between the, all the, of all the prequel movies, I thought mm-hmm. the complaints that we've had about maybe Attack of the Clones, mm-hmm. I felt like there was a certain emotion that played throughout um, Revenge of the Sith. That, am I, that was Yeah, that's the title, right? I had a fucking senior <laughs> moment right now. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Um but no, I thought throughout the whole movie there was a certain emotion in there that I thought 
he did a really good job of capturing with the music, the way the music was so subtle in certain scenes. Like you could feel the intensity that you felt the end was coming. And I, and then, you know, well, see what I liked. I, I also liked the, just, um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, the actor, uh, Owen McGregor, I thought he was just impeccable in that movie. Oh, he was, just he, the subtle he was things awesome like when he's, when he, oh yeah, he was the, he was him and the emperor were the MVPs of that whole franchise. The first three, um, you know, one, two, three, but like this, there's a little subtlety when he sneaks on to Padme's thing and he just, he, you could tell he's like just deep in thought and he just subtly closes the thing with his the the force and you know just and then like he looks like a big brother like you know or your dad or whatever and Anakin's acted a fool to his girl and he's up in the ship and you see him just like standing there like yo what the fuck are you doing bro you know what I'm saying no, like, no, no, you, you, know, you can feel that you felt you that, felt dis- that. that disappointment you felt it you feel, like you know? like even I was like ah shit I didn't do nothing wrong why am I feeling bad about right. this shit right 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 so yeah I, I you know it's just so deep and that and, and I, it was at the time the longest of the Star Wars movies um, it, I just, it was just so well done in my opinion. I, I, a lot of people don't like that one too. Really? But, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the, people just hate on the prequel trilogy period. I'm Actually, one of those prequel I'm trilogy one. has gotten a lot more love lately. To be well, honest yeah, with you. Yeah. Because the, uh, we'll see why we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. discuss why. In Everything's in context, yeah. right? So exactly. What'd yeah. you think, Joe? So if we're going in chronicle, chronological order, and I don't, I know we're here just talking about movies, but there's the whole Clone Wars that cartoon show that's canon it's considered right. yep. canon. no it is that takes place between you know two and three right so there's a lot of stuff that's built up now of course that didn't come till way fucking later but so you're right we're okay. talking chronological and that's kind of what i was talking about earlier about you know you got heinz ketchup or you got some chefy homemade tomato confit consomme right right you got this so it's like the clone wars cartoon is like a condiment that enhances the flavor Right of the prequels, which I think is super important because those those Clone Wars, like in my opinion, they're better than all three of the movies. Even Revenge of the Sith. Even Revenge of the Sith. Wow. So that being <laughs> said, Revenge of the Sith is definitely, to, in my opinion, the strongest out of those three. Right. It's not perfect. There's some cringe acting in there. Some Absolutely. cringe dialogue. Right. But you know what? We, we saw stuff that we never saw before. Yep. We we all knew. Stuff that we heard. We all we knew thought. how it was going to end, right? right? We all knew. Most of us knew how it was going to end. And I think the the confrontation between Obi-Wan and Anakin yep. played out exactly like it, the way it needed to. That was t- yeah, that was t- and it played out like it was in my mind, too, which was crazy. Right. It had now, the payoff. What, it had the payoff. What I didn't like, what, I, what, what some of the things I didn't like was how quickly his commitment to the dark side was, was kind of on off, right? Right. Like, I felt like... Even back in Attack of the Clones, yeah, he killed the Sand People. Who gives a fuck? You know, it's the Sand People. Nobody cares about the Sand People. Right, they're scumbags like, anyway. I felt fuck. like there should have been, uh, in, in previous movies, and this is why I love the Clone Wars so much, because it does do this. There should have been more of him and his anger, you know? that that Because, th- I mean, that's the fucking seed that but plants that's, the That's what the I'm dark, saying. That, that, that's why, excuse me, real quick. And so, that's why I, real quick. I know, so, I'm going to reply to this. Okay, so that's why I felt when he uh, confronted the, the guy who was fucking with Jar Jar back in episode one. Yeah. And he could have, like, did a little force choke out or something or threw he something. He didn't know so, how to use the force. But hold on, but hold on. Let Joe go. So, okay. so, so this, 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 is, this is the point I was going to bring up right. earlier, too. The Phantom, in Phantom Menace, if, if you watch the deleted scenes, mm-hmm. there's a scene where Anakin goes buck wild on Greedo. Right, I saw that. Right? I saw that. Yes, and in the books, right, there's another scene where Anakin's, and this is real. This is super important. There's there's a scene in the book, and it was the novelization from the film, and I'm sure that this Phantom, was in the script. Phantom yeah, or Phantom Sith. Menace. Okay, I'm sure. I'm sure it was in the script, but it probably got cut out for whatever reason, and it ended up in the novelization, where Anakin, when he's a little, when he's a little boy, he actually helps a little child sand people, like it gets lost, and he kind of takes it under his wing and. And gets him back to his family. Right. So it mirrors exactly what happens to Shmi in episode two, where inst- you know where he goes. It's it's a mirror of exactly what happens to him, except instead of the sand people just taking the little boy back, he fucking slot. You know he slaughters. The, right. He slaughters them. So when the, uh, planting the seeds of the, uh, of his turn to the dark side, it was there. But for whatever reason, the shit ended up on the cutting room floor or just got taken out of the script. So when you go back to Sith now. So in the Clone Wars, they sort of address this. There's a few key fucking scenes where he's, you know, he's angry. He's touching the dark side. Like, he's getting there. And it, 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 dude, you're, you're talking, there's what, five, six, seven seasons now or whatever. But in Revenge of the Sith, the the big flaw with it, if you're just watching movies, is that all of a sudden he goes from light to dark side in, right. in, in, in one scene. That was kind of my biggest problem with it, 
too. Like immediately, like oh, you need to come to Dark Side to save your wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, see, but the thing is, he was. But they they kind of did him dirty early in the movie because they wouldn't make him a Jedi Master. I mean, I've done everything you've asked me to do. You mean to tell me I've done everything and you're not going to make me a Jedi Master? Like, what more do I have to do? Suck your dick, makes Windu. You know what I mean? <laughs> I said suck my dick. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know. I mean, what is going on here? Right, You're right. like, why? Fun. That brings back to the beginning because when they say he has the highest, like, uh, you know, whatever, the, met, the, the metachlorian, metachlorian, yeah. And they act like it's no big deal. Like, eh, so what? Like, yeah. Well, he's not to be. I'm like, yeah. you're gonna act like this is the first time you've ever seen this before. Right. right. No big deal. Like, oh, that's a great point. I that's forgot about that. Whatever, right? And uh, well, okay, so okay, the metachlorian thing. Like that sounds like a, like a space. Uh, <laughs> STD uh, or no, something like no, that. It does not. Like I went to Tatooine and oh man, this me, chick okay, gave me no, no, metachlorians. You know what to I mean? Metachlorians like, to me <laughs> is that how they is that like an energy level we have in us that connects us to the force? And the force is about energy, right? Is metachlorians how they use an energy count to be like, wow, this guy's really connected and not even knowing? No, it, 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 it's straight up a quantifiable, <laughs> a quantifiable measure in your cells right. that they say tells you how much you have of the force. I don't think right. it's. They, it, that, oh, okay, I'm okay prop, with that. I, I, I'm okay with it now. Back then, I was like, huh? Like, The Force, this right. is like this is supposed to be fantasy. Like, it's just a sci-fi movie, right? Yeah. Right. But it's not. It's a, it's a fantasy movie the that sci-fi. has different technology than we have. Right. Yeah. You know? That's really what it is. And I think when it goes, when you start explaining the technology, like, let's be honest. No motherfucker knew how lightsabers worked until they started talking about Kyber crystals and right, and they start explaining right. You know, and that's in the Clone, in the Wars. Clone Wars. And I think it's dope. It, 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 and that's one thing that I hate, kind of hate about the cartoons is I didn't need, I didn't need to know that. Really, that's right. like I can't just just to let the lightsaber. It's this technology what, we don't right. even know or but understand. I you know, I mean, that's what makes it dope. Like the three shell, like the three shells from Demolition Man, right? Like you don't need to know. Yeah. Like, I need it's to know some how other to, unruly no, no. technology. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, hey, if I'm gonna live in the future, I need to know how to wipe my ass properly. I'm just saying. If you don't know how to wipe your ass properly at any time, you got a problem, my brother. <laughs> but I will say this though, when you talk about the crystals and all that, it gives it gives a lot of um, it makes it more tangible to me. Like uh, we know it has to work. Obviously, they're not a lightsaber doesn't work on pure fucking magic. There has to be some technology behind it. It's, I mean, the force is mystical. Yes, and that's why you like the li- mini chlorians, right? Good, yeah, you can't, the force just can't be magical. Um. No, and yeah, because if that was magical, why can we all can't do it? Like you could tell, there's like only some people are able to hone that. That's why you become Jedi, and you, you have people who are not. And so I do believe it gives credence to that. Why there are certain people with that unique ability. So uh, you're saying magic versus biologically doesn't not doesn't work for you, Joe? Yeah, at least not in the context of Star okay. Wars. Like I need fantasy. I need otherworldly. I need shit I don't understand so that it feels magical. Right, you see, you know? for me, I've always felt like the Jedi are, are very telekinetic, like telekinetic, do, telekinetic, like because they're able to you do things. You know what I mean? And, and again, there is energy. Ba- there are energy-based beings. You look, example, Darth Sidious when he uses the you know lightning attack. Um, but to build upon what you guys are saying, my only true grievances with um, episode three, and I love episode three. I think. Okay, so you, what, well, I want to know what you thought when you left the theater. Because you, okay, okay, you hated you know, Attack of the Clones you and you you hated Phantom Menace. This what is did you one, think when you left the theater? I walked out. I was like. That's my shit. Okay. I even got it on boot, boot, um, bootleg. I had the bootleg too. Three days later. And but, my bootleg had Yoda scene still in it. So did mine. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I digress. My only my only real concern was how I felt like Padme was a strong woman, right? Right. And then her heart was broken, so she didn't want to live. And it's like a strong woman would be there for her children. I felt like something could have been done to make it more tragic to where she died by accident because of Anakin's right. reckless action okay but we didn't quite get that wait hold on let me no, no, you, I, I need you Ooh, to mr carter no, no. Ooh, mr carter <laughs> no you bite your tongue god damn it it's my turn to talk. all right all right go ahead and that, i felt like that's where they dropped the ball a little bit because there was it was supposed to be significant like part of anakin's torture is that she died because of him he was supposed to live with that yep. As, and padme was a strong woman throughout the series right a strong woman would not abandon her children and just, I give up because my love of my life is gone. No, your love of life lives in your two seeds. Right. And I, I, honestly, I agree with you 100%. I think... Well, but in the, it, okay, well, no, 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 okay. no, 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 no. I'm not done. God damn it. Bite your tongue. Um, no, I just felt like there was something that could have been done with the, okay, with, that, with the confrontation between her and Obi-Wan. Something should have happened where he it would have been a, um, a, a, li- a life-ending injury caused by Anakin that should have done that and I don't know I don't know why I don't know if Lucas couldn't have done that for that PG-13 rating or he wasn't or why he couldn't have just right. executed it that way because, because I, there was a comic book 
And the comic goes to the movie. It was scene for scene. And he picks her up and throws her. Right? And that's how she... I, then why didn't they use it? In the, and I agree. I agree. Because I, I think it would have been, like you said, the PG-13 aspect would have been too much. I totally agree. I wish he would have thrown her like, like he did I, like, in the like, comic like, book. A, like, a, like a force fit. Like he does right. when he came out. Like like he wasn't trying to attack her, but so, he did something out of anger and she caught the wind of that and it so, was his yes. fault. In my head canon, in my head canon, especially after seeing Rise of Skywalker, <laughs> especially after seeing Rise of Skywalker, her death actually makes more sense. Really? Okay, yes. break it down for me, homie. We can't. We have to get there. We'll get oh, there. God. We'll we have to there. wait? This is sounds, no, 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 no. This sounds too fucking good. Uh, we'll get back. Way, we'll, we'll, get back to it. we'll get to it. We'll get to it. No, fine. So you, now I got not... blue balls till the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So then, right, okay. So at the end of Revenge of the Sith, you see Luke and Leia born, yeah. right? And then, chrono, you know, story wise, it goes. It will go into Solo. Yes. And so, a couple months back, I just because I was getting ready for Rise of the Skywalker, I watched I did, all I of them the in order, and it made Solo better because you got to see. And it, it 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 you got to see the you see Luke Leia kid and then you see like teenager or mid twenties solo and then when you got him in Force Awakens, it just elevate you know it just elevated the those characters. I I, did, I think Solo right. from the start was highly underappreciated. That okay. movie's fucking genius. I don't want to say genius is fun. Now, real quick, what did you think about uh, Episode Three? I forgot to ask you. Oh, three was. The better one for me out of the out of the first three, um, it was darker. I liked that about it. Right. Um, and in that ending scene that we talked about, that's right. another plus for me. Cringeworthy acting, no chemistry between the two. You guys already covered all that. Right. So, yeah. um, that was inherent in all three prequels. Yeah, I don't speak highly of the, of the prequels. When we start getting right. into four, five, and six, then you know right. I can right. I can get a little deeper. So into real that. quick, I also wanted to talk about the Yoda. Um, the Yoda uh, Emperor fight scene, I dug. Oh, that's I've been dope. waiting for that. I've been waiting for that since I was a kid. I did that as in my Kenner, you know, yeah. Star Wars yeah. canon. So to see it live, I I forgot to talk about how dope that was. Um, but uh, yeah, so but Solo, what did you think about Solo? You... Solo, I thought was um, it was fair. It was unnecessary to me. For me, when I see Solo, not not Harrison Ford, it I just detached mm. from it. Um, but, did you think the actor did a good job of trying to play what Harrison Ford would be as an innocent person, like before he became a pirate? Like, guess what I got off of the like I saw, you know, we've all had that point where before we become man, we had that last moment of innocence before we become a harder version or maybe grow up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we all evolve, so I I don't have a problem with how he was in Solo. <laughs> I mean, because there's shit, you know, if there was video of me you know, 20 years ago, I'd be like, damn, I wore that shit or I did. <laughs> yeah. So I don't have a problem with that kind of evolution of him. Yeah. But I just, for me, I thought it, it wasn't really needed. I, I did like how he met Chewie, though. Now, I that scene I thought you, was dope. On that, you know what? To build on what you said, I agree with you. It wasn't needed. But you know what, though? I'm, I'm actually glad I got it. Like, I wasn't asking for a solo movie, but when I walked out, even from a technical aspect, now we all—I wasn't there, but we've all heard the rumors there was huge production issues yes. with that movie. Yes, they and changed directors and right all that for Ron Howard to come in and a lot of credit to Lucas of Films as well too for them to make something good out of all that mess. Right, I have to give a lot of props to because I was—I went into thinking like this is not going to be good, but I, as a fan, I'm going to go see it. I walked away thinking this movie could have came out in 1985, and I would. Have never known the difference. Uh, to it me, wasn't bad. No, it, you know? it, it, right. it, it captured the magic of the original trilogy. It did honor to the characters. The acting was good, and it had that fun, playful spirit sure. of the original trilogy. And I thought for the mess that movie was in, they nailed the landing on that. Yeah, good fucking job. Sure. Oh yeah, I agree. Um, I saw it, and I was expecting the worst. I didn't want a solo movie. Like I was just like, none of us I, did. I, yeah, I, I like him as this mysterious. You know. Uh, scoundrel that just comes and is in it for the money initially and then you see you know and he becomes a hero at the end of episode four right I, I liked it like that I didn't want to know shit about him but it still kind of left a little bit of mystery because you got him at a certain age yep um, and he still told the thing it's just some parts I thought were a little Disney-ish and a little like annoying which, like which parts okay so it's like <laughs> I'm gonna be a pilot oh did I mention I'm gonna be a pilot oh by the way 
I'm going to be, you know, it's like a talking to a 13 year old. I'm going to be a cowboy. I'm going to be a cowboy. I'm going to be a, and like over and over. Like that part just bugged the that shit out of me. That is very Disney. No, you were, yeah, I agree with that you. That's very, very Disney. Inher- inherent you know what Disney. I'm saying? Yeah. So other than that, um, and then the thing is the way they portrayed, ever since Disney's got a hold of the solo character, I feel like they're, they're portraying the Return of the Jedi version of Solo. You don't see that cool, suave motherfucker from like Episode Four and Episode Five. You get like the bumbling. I got lucky sure. and I shot something, and you know, especially in Episode Seven. And they kind of touched on it a little bit in Episode. I mean, not Episode, but excuse me, Solo, a Star Wars story. Um, because but he had, he had I, evolved to that. Like he, he wasn't. He, he I wasn't do smart. not agree. I totally agree. <laughs> I I would say this. I thought he, he, elements of what the Solo you like are in there, but again, he was still innocent. We didn't see what happened at the end of Solo to where he became a full-on pirate and had to get that suave. Like you know what I mean? You, well, are, I, you, I, to, you do see it because he 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 out he outdid um, Solo. I mean, not Solo. He outdid uh, uh, Lando, who, by the way, uh, yes, Childish the Gambino was dope. Killed in it in that role. I'm gonna say like I, you know, like I know you wasn't feeling. You said yo, if it's not Harrison Ford, I'm not feeling it. I, yo, childish! It, it seemed slayed like he was. That he slayed he was that dope. Shit. I mean, he was wearing the um, the the Cleo. Uh, I mean, not Theo Huxtable dress shirt. You know, what I'm saying it had that yellow, and he was just he was a cool. pimp, dude. He and was he, he was rocking a Gumby. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I was like, yo, that's how I want. You know, he was like a space pimp. You know, what I'm saying so. I was good with uh, Lando. You know, and I was good with Woody. You know, to, um, to, to, to Woody was what dope. Woody was dope. A O E to build on what you said though. I like how childish Gambino. Really took that role to heart oh, and did he it killed, justice. Bro. Like he he understood the weight of that character Hello, and that parts of that character. Oh yeah. And I thought he wasn't the original actor, but damn it, he did that role. Per- oh, Joe's disagreeing. Yeah, Joe's no, not no, no, no. I'm a, a post Disney takeover Lucasfilm. Solo is, in my opinion, the best film. Oh, I, I love Solo. It is the best. I film love Solo. I don't. I don't know if it's the best one. I'm, I'm, we're gonna get to that next. So, but that's it, a, go kick it, Joe. Kick, po- kick, so kick the guy. So kick it though. Post Disney. So he, here's the thing with this that. I don't know if a lot of people have missed it or what, but I know there's a lot of people that hate it. That it blows my mind, it, um, and not so much hate it where they're just kind of like, eh, you know. It's and, okay. I don't, and I don't know it's why. Right. So, solo for me is what basically I've been waiting for since episode four. It is a space western, right? And this is what makes the Mando work so much, and we'll talk about that later. Absolutely, is so. And, and the other thing that makes it work is just like the end of Empire Strikes Back. It, you know. Nobody's saving the fucking world or the universe. There's not these super huge stakes. Solo works so well because the climax of the film is a brawl in a fucking living room. Right. You know what I mean? And like, and it was all about, it was very film noir, but very Western, very yep. Kurosawa style yep. Western where it's like, or I mean, we, uh, you know, samurai film that influenced Westerns. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a small story. That isn't these huge stakes. Right, and that's how it's just uh, for the characters, and right. that's what made it work for me. That's a great it, point. It, it, and and on top of that, the 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 context, the effects, the world building, right, right, right. was just on point. Explaining no. the Kessel Run, explaining yeah, why was, child that's what I was says, yeah. says Han instead of Han. Hello, Han, like like all of these little tiny right. fucking things that just when you, when you sewed it all together, and then uh, the, so. Michael Gacchino, Gucciano, Gacchino, whoever the fuck his name is, him taking those John William elements and mixing them into the the score of this right. film, hitting the beats right when they needed to be hit, like it was just I I, just, I, was, I, I was let me ask you this, let me ask you this real quick. So the way they portrayed uh, Han, like it's almost like bumbling, perfect. Yes or no? Perfect. It you was like, perfect. You like him bumbling. It was perfect. I it felt was, like in the beginning. I felt like in the beginning of the movie, he was an 18, 19 year old, right. yep. immature fucking kid, and I, I also thought that, you know, after he fucking uh, uh, abandoned the military or, or that the was empire, genius. I love that. Like all of a sudden, like he was, he was a fucking scoundrel when he right. puts the jacket on and he's like, you well, know, he was more at home as a scoundrel anyway. You yeah, know yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like when he's talking to you, he's like, you have yeah, to what do you know? You, have to you know, like it was that was. Like right. he was solo. Like right. for me, that was that and was. You, and you got to right. understand that we need to see how how he becomes solo before episode four. You want to kind of. I mean, we're already into the history. Let us see a little bit of that you're not born who you are. You grow. You grow and evolve to that point. And I'm glad we got that. Yeah, seeing yeah. Karelia, right? Yep. Incredible. Yep. I love the World War One callbacks to the costuming of the empire so i right. thought that was just i'm genius. gonna revisit it now you know now that i'm yeah. now that you're trench. bringing this stuff up the little I'm thinking details, about like a, it you when, know? He, when he went there from um, 
Do you hear the the theme to the Empire when he goes oh, to that the was a, Oh, I love that scene. And it was smart how to utilize so many things. And then the solo, like he, I mean, for whatever reason, we don't know why he didn't give his last name because we know he knows his last name, right? Or but, does he? But that's what I like though. That still they, they still kept the mystery. I think because he does. I, 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 I wanted the mystery there. I don't want to know who his parents were, even though he talks about his dad, how he used to work on the. Shit, but that's, and that's what I was going to build upon. When Joe goes, does he know his last name? I think he does because he said, "Oh, my dad used to work on this," so I know he probably knows his last name. But why didn't he say? It? There's a reason for it, and right. it was never disclosed. And I like that better. Refresh me on the Han versus Han. What was the deal on that? You so, were saying? so for whatever reason, you know, Lando, ne- he call Han Han, Han and um, and then, you know, it's just his accent. Where is Billy D. Williams from anyway? I don't know. Uh, St. Louis is he from? It, he says Han. Like, hey, was he Han. not supposed to in Empire? Well, no, he no. supposed to call him Han. His name is Han. Han. Yeah, but he they were calling him Han, Han right. for two months. But he's like, but Han. then they flipped it to make it seem like he was being, you know, like you know, like yeah, so, yeah he had a swagger to it. In like, the movie, what's up, Han? in the movie, you're, and they're they're about to place a Bach. Yeah, and it says something something Han, and then Solo says it's uh, Han. Yeah. Actually, you know, it was like yeah. so it made it seem like it made it seem like Lando in Empire was calling him Han just to fuck with just him. Just to right. fuck with because him. Because of years, yeah. years ago. Right. So and it was just like, yeah. that type of shit is yeah. like great. Yeah. It's like when you, you know, when you were with your homies and your homie has a nickname for you and, right. you know, that's just between you and him. That shows the bond. And right. I agree with you on that. And that, yep. that shows you how that happened right there. Billy DeWitt is from New York, by the way. From New York. Oh, from nice. New York. Even better. Right. Hello, Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> So then, I mean, I I thought Solo. I, I I couldn't believe that Solo got the backlash that it got. I agree with Solo, you. Solo, I just dug it. I mean, I, I my son at the time seventeen, and we were just rocking. Oh, 18. and we were just rocking and rolling in that theater, just having a good time, and just from start to finish. I tell you what, I'll ride with Solo before I ride with one, two, or three. That's fair. You know well, I, mean? I, I, I can't argue. That's, with that's, that's just fair. me. You know I'm, I mean? I'm, I'm with I'm with you, uh, Sith. Though I, I love the Sith. Well, here's the thing, though, that could, says a lot, yeah. though. Though you know, if you think about what Mike said, I didn't really feel this, but Solo, I felt Solo. That says a lot too. That that says, hey, you know what? This movie is highly underappreciated because you you watched the films. The first we didn't connect with you, but you liked this one. I made no sense why this movie underperformed. They said because of marketing. I think people were already it got the backlash of, of Last Jedi. Last which, Jedi, that's what it was. And you it know, came the, out too quick. And you know that movie is deserved to do better. And the the the, annoying, the, the frustrating thing with Disney on that one, we're not going to get Orlando uh, solo movie because it's supposed to be two of the movies for Solo. They they signed him up for a three movie deal, and wow, the I idea was you, Lando would be spearheading the second sequel, and then you, you go from there. It was so somehow. So it was eventually tying to episode four. We're not going to get that yet. That movie. So with that, made the, the Darth Maul amount. thing was going to. Uh, they were going to elaborate on the Darth. Well, Maul thing, I, right? I, I don't know too much about that, but I know they had them. Um, the actors were signed for three picture deal. Right. Uh, and the thing is, that movie. If okay, that movie's considered a bomb. Most movies that fail wish they would have made the profit of that film. That's true. And you know what, Disney. Even if the movie didn't make as much a billion dollars, come on, you're Disney. You got other franchises that covers that loss. Right. This movie. You could have built upon that, and I guarantee you the sequels would have done so much better. And you know what? I am I love Ron Howard. I think he's a great director. Oh, Ron Howard's And you know what? Dude. I have no, no no offense to the two other directors who did the Lego movies. Lord Miller. I would have loved to see what they would have done. But you know what, though? I think Ron Howard came in, and you had the right balance of a high adventure, comedy, and drama. And it got the, the what made Star Wars magical right. And like you said, you know, it didn't have to be... We didn't ask for this, but it was a good advent- space adventure, and that's what we need. For I was to totally be. against it when they announced it. Oh, I was so like, I, remember, I, I, remember. I, remember. I, I was totally were. against it. I was like, we have a young Han Solo movie. It's called A New Hope. Like, yeah. what the fuck, you know? Yeah, I was uh, totally, and I and I wonder. That's I'm a good point. That that's actually is, a good point. Yeah, is kind of why I liked it so much is because I was already thinking, fuck this movie, and right. then I go and see. It, I was like, wow, this is really like this is really I, good. And I agree yeah, with you. I was the same way. I was like, it was dope. I was like, oh, holy yeah. shit! See, like, I was wrong. My favorite aspects of the original franchise were the solo. Solo is my guy, and I like the Bubba Fett. I love the jo- his whole little backstory. Yeah. And everything, yeah. all the bounty hunters. That was my favorite aspect of the original trilogy. I love the Jedi's and all that shit, but that was more my speed. You know, what I'm saying growing up, that was what I liked, and so to see that, I, I dug it. I just, I, I, I just thought he was extra cool in in Episode Four and Episode Five, and then he became kind of bumbling. And I, I feel that that is what they kind of based Solo on. That was just my, you know, just my interpretation. That's all. So, but my favorite one of the well. Yeah, my favorite one of the Disney is Rogue One. And the reason why I like Rogue One so much, it has like a Saving Private Ryan, like a real dirty, filthy war movie feel. 
I agree. Um, but I can't think of the dude's name. It's just get my mind. Uh, the, the, who's the Spanish dude in the opening scene that murks out the? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the I, I just dude, can't remember yeah. his name. I just have it. What Spawn and I talked about when we first saw it, what we liked about it is as if the Skywalker films come across like the lore, like you know when you talk about Paul Bunyan, you know these great big yes, mythical the folklore, figures, the folklore. The folklore, and then when you watch Rogue One. It's like those documentaries you watch on like an A&E yes. of, the, of the World War when you realize how gritty things were. Like even the bad guys yeah. had to get down and dirty. Like you even saw. the good guys you mean. Like, you know, propaganda aside, you saw what really had to transpire to get things going. It was a messy road. Like yep. the good guys had to do some shicey things because there were high stakes involved. Right. And it wasn't like they were trying to be as bad as the Empire, but it was like they had to do what they had to do because it was there was the eye on the prize and that prize was freedom. Right. And that's and, why I dug it. And it was, it, it showed, you know what? It captured the sacrifice. Like when he said that line, "Oh, a lot of good people die for this." You had no idea the right. sacrifice that was made. Like, and it was crazy. Was the sacrifice was the belief that this is for a better tomorrow? Like right. they, these guys said, "You know, we're here. We're gonna." They didn't have to even get involved. That's what made the, the sacrifice so so tragic. Right. You know, and they all had to believe this is we're gonna do this for the greater good. And they were like, they gave their lives for this. And, and what's right. crazy was the amount of casualties that came from. It. Like I thought it was only be a few. The spies. whole squad got yeah. got. Yeah. And the squad, that squad that sacrificed themselves, did it for that belief. Like right. they knew, they knew they weren't coming out, and they went in there, and it felt, it was dope to see. Yep. Like you do finally that one line to realize the significance of that line. Like the significance, like if it if Rogue One didn't happen, you wouldn't really have an episode four or two degree. Yep. You know, or at least they made that. That's why I made Rogue One so important now. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Like, and that's hard to do. That that's that to me, Rogue One is a perfect companion to episode four and. Oh, it goes right. I mean, it's just perfect. And to be honest with you, Lucasfilm pulled that off. Oh yeah, and I, they had a, And I know that the third act of the film had to be redone, and for them to hit the landing on that too, Lucasfilm say what you will, but yep. when the movie's a mess, so far that studio has been able to yeah, pull the ties yeah, together. Yeah, like they don't, they, they don't just say it is what it is. They make a hell of an effort to get those movies right. Although I do have to question, like, why does every movie have production problems? But that's a whole different subject. Right. Yeah. So the one thing I also like is a little, like, same thing with Solo, the little little nuances, the little things. So that see, okay, so if you look at the original episode for 1977, there's a round table and there's one seat missing, which is the dude that's in all white. That's where he would have been sitting, but he blew up on, what was that planet? Sure, uh, I can't the right one now. from Rogue One. Yeah. So he, he was the one that architect uh, the whole oh, Death yeah, Star. Yeah. That would have been his spot, but dude's dead. You That's Jen like Erso's that. pop, right? No, not Jen Erso's pop. The guy in all white. Um, I can't Krennic, think director Krennic. Krennic. Okay. And here's the thing, too. If I may Sorry. even... Okay, and you brought up a good point. Sorry about that. That movie validates a huge plot hole in episode four. So you have this great big-ass battle station. Right. Yeah, there's this little port that can be blown up with like two torpedoes. Right. I like how they said... That was intentional. That that saved it from that saved episode four. You think they did that intentionally? I, no, 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 no. Okay, uh, no, it no, wasn't for, for the movie. For the movie, for, I, I yeah, for, for the movie for, they for did the, it to, yeah, to yeah, clean yeah. up the, the that mess. Yeah, well, the mess. Well, we also know that the, the you know the architect also did it on purpose too because he, you know he had to hide a weak point. Like he designed it. If you can shoot this here, no, no, so, but he's saying that. He's, oh, in terms of in, in terms of in terms like of the script, like a cleanup. Yeah, a total cleanup. Yeah, that was for sure. And that was smart. I think that was that addressed a huge. Problem, kind of like the hand Han thing, right? Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's so funny too. It's like if people say it's a huge problem. I've never had a problem. With no, it. I never. You did. know, yeah. it's but like the, um, they but, found the plan, they got the plans, they found a weakness, like that. That right, that was right. it. You know, no, but, but when you start like talking about taking things apart, I guess, and you just demythicize it, it's it's great to see like for fanfare, uh, they adjust it. They they address that because right. I know in comic books they will, you know, whatever is in the you know was considered a plot hole in the movies, the comic books will clean up and address. So it was great to see. Rogue One do that. I'm racking my brain right now trying to remember the planet that... Oh, yeah. I, where I that's can't remember. The Citadel. Either. I can't remember the name of it. Right. Oh. But they had like all kinds Scarif. of... Scarif. The planet's Scarif. called Scarif. Yeah, Scarif. look at this. Scarif. Yeah, that's why he's here right now, y'all. My boy Joe. But yeah, so, I mean, what did you think? I know you liked it at first. I fucking love it. Rogue I still One? love it. Oh, okay, okay. I, I love Solo more because, again, I, right. I'm thinking I'm just... A, I'm a mark for film noir and western style shit. That's why I love Solo right. more. But Rogue One is the fucking ranch dressing of my chicken nuggets. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just enhances the original three so much. Yep. So much. Yeah. You know, Rogue One, when I went in to see it, I'm like, okay, man, I like this. I like the stormtroopers. Let me tell you, that Vader scene. Oh, oh shit. Sure. Right. Yo, hold on. Hold on. First of all, he's in, in, in the water or whatever that. Um, oh, back the, the back, tank. The back that, the Yeah. Thing. Okay. Yeah. He's in that. 
All right, but then he comes out with the slight red tint on from A New Hope. Right. Yes. And I'm getting chills right now just the way he approaches Krennic. Yes. I was scared Same. for him, right? And he just and they're over the shoulder on that him. That shadow, then, that shadow casting. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I knew I go, this is my shit yeah. right here. So you, would, you know, to even to build on the whole Vader. Yeah. In there. It also give credence as to why he was so dirty and dingy in episode four, and why in episode five and six and so far he was so clean and crisp. It it made sense to continu- continuity wise. It's right because we know originally it was because of just makeup and production. That's what they had to work on. You know what I mean? They got better as the films went on. But it was great to say, hey, let's take this little defect and give it purpose mm-hmm. and give it reason. Right. And you see, the reason he was dirty and dingy because he was in a space battle that just mutilated. And it was so great about that mutilation when you finally saw the Vader that we only heard about through right. interviews and what they talked Comic about, what he books, could really do. You know. And you just see him just as his fucking pet bull murk out everybody. Murk out everybody with, in that hallway. With no dude. mercy. And then you could, and you know, it's, it's funny. And also, like, ran, it also gives credence as to why he was so angry in episode four. Like when he was like, you know, during the original film, you know, the way James Earl Jones played him, he played him with a lot of aggression, and then he was he mellowed out as the films progressed. Right. But you could now it makes sense why he was so frustrated. upset and yeah, frustrated. He was super frustrated in the opening scene yes. of episode and four. And he gives credence because to that, he like, just had to kill a whole bunch of motherfuckers. Right. I know you got it. Stop bullshitting. And it's the thing right. that he was upset about. That was vital information they had to get back because they knew they're going to be fucked if it, if it gets leaked out. And so you can see his. it makes sense why he's so aggressive in episode four. And like you said, Perfect analogy. It is the ranch to his chicken McNuggets, which, fuck, I'm hungry now. Dude. I want some nuggets. <laughs> I want some fucking McNuggets. Give me a goddamn 20 piece. <laughs> it's just, it enhances. It's like putting salt on meat before you cook it. You right. know what I mean? That's what Rogue One is. It just, because yeah. when, it, I mean, when I did my rewatch, as soon as you get into a new hope, you're like, fuck, it's perfect. It, it is like great. a perfect transition. Right. I watched all of them and they go together. But you know, spotless. here's the fucking thing, though. That Vader scene. No, so I I like fan service. You know, people people are like, oh, fan service, fan service. I, I'm down I, with I that. fucking love fan service. Yep. But like, you didn't even really need Vader in Rogue One to get the story where it no, you didn't. Right. No, but it was but a great, man, but it was a great spice right. added, though. And, and then I remember reading that that Vader scene, the slaughter scene, like Vader's only scene was in Vader's castle. Right. That slaughter scene came after the mess, and boy, I'm glad they, they did re- it. They yeah, re- they too. filmed it because that right there is. It just it's it's the appetizer. It's right. the appetizer for the rest of the movie. It's just like what it, the fuck? We finally see Vader be Vader. Yeah, it, it, you know? it, it, and it, it brought, it, made Vader scary again. Well, you know, well, we well, talked about that. that yeah. it, 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 it made Vader. It ties again. into the continuity and shows you how it is in the, the DC universe. It's the real world thing. He was always that dude, and it just reemphasizes his impact and his role. That's, yeah, and you know it just it just adds to that. That's you know, all he's I, standing there in the dark, and then the saber lights up. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. a wrap. Then he goes and stands on the, the ledge. When yeah, the, you know, Goosebumps coming. Just yeah, for sure, dude. But, he, but, he, but that's just it, though. He was the emperor's pit bull, and that's why people liked him or either feared him or hated him because he was different from the rest of the empire. They knew right. he was kind of. Somewhere not really above the law, but he didn't confine to the rules, and he was the enforcer. Like if right. you couldn't get the job done, Double this labor. guy, yep. <laughs> this guy will do it. And if he has to get involved, you're now fucked. I felt bad for Krennic because yeah. you know he didn't even want to go fuck with him when yeah. he had to go talk to him, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he's but, just and, like, and, and, yeah, because at that time Vader was so depressed. Like in the comic books, there's like a comic book that yeah. that goes with it at the time, and he was just so down and just like just disgusted with everything. And right. For someone to come riding and he said like you know like just tell him right. like, you know don't yeah, get choked. Yeah. <laughs> choked, don't choke on your aspirations. So, so, another thing about gangster. that movie when we're talking about right. technology leaping forward, right. Tarkin. Okay, okay. Oh, so yeah. that was done well. It fucking ge- so my wife didn't even realize that yep. Peter Cushing was dead. Yep, that was incredible. And, and she had thought that wow, like you know, he still looks good. It's like man, he died like. 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and and like, but see, and, how come they couldn't do that though with Leia? Like, yeah, you are. Like, yeah, I yeah. I, 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 you guys know they found that cast, all right? They had their old casting of his face from, I don't know what movie. No. Um, one of the Hammer movie. films, probably, probably, right? Probably Hammer film. And they based a lot of it on that. No way. Because they had a direct oh, Well, you know, though, dope. but, but, but it wasn't, that but it was dope. a mixture that's of what CGI I read. and an actor that looked like him because it wasn't just pure CGI. And, you know, I knew of the effect and, you know, as a fan, I liked it, but you know, because you're into it, you start looking yeah, at little defects. Those, those deep fakes on fucking YouTube are better than the Leia. Oh yeah, the Leia was fucked off. End, you know, the Leia was fucked off in nine. It, it, we'll get to that shit. Yeah, anyway. yeah. They, 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 I mean, I'm glad. I, I, I'm glad we got it, but I do agree. I kind of, 
it, it's not perfect, but the, even with um, lay a training rate, man, don't get me started. Man. But even oh. let's go, man. All right. But even with Peter Crushing, though, when you see the lips move, you can see right. the limitations of it because it looked Pixar. And I had to wonder, it was Pixar uh, Ghost doing some of the special effects because Pixar is a genius when it comes to that. Maybe. Were they involved? Because they're underneath the same umbrella. Did they help with that? And you can only tell it's a CGI character because of the lip movement. To me, that that's you know the eyes on down, eyes on a uh, nose on up looked real. The mouth, you can tell animation. Right. You know. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can tell if right. you're really fucking looking yeah, at which it. Yeah, right. I, right. I, right. I, 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 you know, I was it's like, like, I was like this. seventy-five percent of the population had no fucking clue that Absolutely. that was a CG face. Yep. And it's other smart marks, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. us. They're like. Wow, dead. that's wow. He's <laughs> yeah. been dead a while. Yep. Been dead, <laughs> exactly. And you're man. really looking hard, like you like. I know Tarkin's look at right. okay. That that one muscle above his left cheek yeah, is yeah, not yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But see, okay, so but why couldn't they pull that off with Leia more? Especially if she was alive at the time. That's they true. Done, I don't you know. know. Yeah, I don't know, get she didn't it. look like Leia, but before she had passed. But yeah. you know, th- again, just probably just mistakes. You know what I mean? It's not like. You know, 20, hindsight's twenty twenty, so it's not like I'm sure they're like, ah, eh, we probably could have done it this way. They were probably just thinking, let's try it like this and see what we could do. And, you know, you work in films and what have you, so you know, something so, you, you run with the idea that may or may not work, and you yeah. hindsight's oh, twenty twenty. Like, well, you maybe run we should have done it like this afterwards, you right? Just, yeah, you just look. Have you watched it like and go right into uh, Force? I mean, um, A New Hope. Have you watched it like Rogue One and then go right into New? No, Hope? I have not. It's, do it. It, it. it just enhances it. Yeah, do it. It's almost like. The same movie and it's just oh it's so good like that. Yo. They I give them credit for what they pulled off. That was an impossible feat and they fucking nailed it. Sure, I, you know, yeah. I think yeah the director Gareth Edwards I think his name is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He uh you know he went where they filmed the New Hope and chilled in those caverns and shit and, nice. and took pictures and he that's that was the type of research he went and did. Not man. like that. It like was they, smart, like, even though they took away the movie, the last third of the movie from him, and the, you know they had to bring in someone else to do because the whole last third of the film, I believe, was reshot and re. Really, I didn't know that. Why, why is that? that? Luke, what happened? Uh, Lucasfilm just wasn't really happy with the last third of it, right. and they were got involved. And to their credit, they pulled it off. But Lucasfilm was like, "No, nah, we're gonna have to redo this." I think, um, uh, what's his name again? Uh, the director, the Gareth. Director, uh, Gareth. I think uh, he, had, he was already on something else, so they were like, "Nope, we have our own directors. We're gonna shoot it like this." Boom, 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 boom. He was responsible for the. Uh, he wasn't responsible then for the Vader scene, but he was responsible for the Krennic Vader scene then, right? I believe so. Yeah, the yeah, first two yeah, thirds. Yeah. The first, if I'm not mistaken, the first two thirds of the film is his. Okay. The last thirds is Lucasfilm. Bullshit. And they made it cohesive, and it's like right. when, when you you I'm mad it there. No, I'm not, and, yeah. I, and that's why like I said earlier, Lucasfilm can hit the landing. It's crazy. That's the only studio that will try to get that movie to work. You know what I mean? The, although, like I said too, though the flip side, why are they always having production troubles? But again. Different argument, different discussion for sure. another time. Sure. So then, uh, then it comes to now to the meat and potatoes. The 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 main event is four, five, and six. Sure. Now, a new hope is the only one I've never seen in the theater. Um, even when it came yeah. out, uh, I just never saw it. I was too young. Well, clearly, um, we're the same age. Right, you, right. you didn't see the special editions when they came out? Yeah, no. I saw, oh, well, I saw yeah. those, no, but I didn't I, see them. I, I, I don't know why. I just didn't catch it. Really? Them. Yeah, I don't know why. Those I, I wanted big to. Screen. I think I was I was I I just moved back to California and I was broke and or something I don't know. Dude, everyone can do a two dollar matinee. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I didn't see it. I'm just I I just I, I don't know why I I don't remember. But I just love I I the remake the the one that we're talking about the 1997. I God, it just bugs me. But was it the CGI? Yeah, the CGI. Um, but the original. I love it. The original is beautiful. I just it's just like. You know, when people talk about film, then they talk about, say, Psycho, and they talk about Gone with the Wind. They well, talk it's about, iconic. It's, it's very iconic. One, yeah, it's just one of the most, if not the most iconic movie of any generation. I think it's, it captures everything, and I, it just aids beautifully. Well, like I said, that kicked off the 80s pop culture for us. Right. That was that was the start. You know what I mean? Um, now, story-wise, um, I like all the, I, I mean, I, I, I love the whole characters. I love even the side characters, Porkins and, yeah. and <laughs> you know, Red One. You know, I just, every there's everything. I love, just love everything It about was that a movie. great, fun space adventure. And, and there's not just, much else we could really say that right, hasn't been said before. Right. It's hard to add to, to anything on that Joe, one. Joe, what do you think, man? Right, perfect. exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's just what you guys said. The movie's near perfect. It's not my favorite Star Wars film. No. Right? No, no, no. But it's... I mean, it's it's the one that set the bar. It right. set the fucking tone. Right? Oh yeah, for you sure. know it. It took from westerns. It took from Kurosawa. It took from all these other flicks. And Is there mixed, one thing that you don't? All... One thing you could think of that you don't like about Force? Uh, I'm sorry, A New Hope. A New Hope. Yeah. No, I like it. it 
if I were to be critical about it, I guess um, maybe fuck. Actually, no. Yeah, well, no, to me, that, anything, I, I, keep, I keep going to the flaws, and in my mind, is like, no, that's fucking all right. Anything like, that you can think you of know? that a flaw of, uh, of 1977. I mean, if you're going to kill me and you want me to come up with something. No, no, uh, no, 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 that's, no, that's, that, no, that type of thing. If you got a gun to my head oh, type yeah, yeah. thing, on, on, we're talking a new hope. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just thought something. That's uh, maybe, maybe Obi Wan hanging, you know, with Vader like that, you know, maybe. Yeah. And him running around the the, the Death Star, or whatever. With his bad knees. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that's just if you. Right. Yeah, if you're man, but I, I can't. Yeah. yeah for, that's and, what I'm saying. And for me, that that is my favorite one of the bunch. To me, it just the vibe. It just I, takes I, me. I, it, I, it, I, it, I, it, I respect it, you for that. I'm it, glad it, you it, it, feel it, that way. To me, that's to me personally, that's my number one. That's just I'm home. Is that if that makes any exactly. sense? Yeah. Like it's like it's like I'm good. I love all the other ones. And again, technically. Empire is the, is the most proficient. I thought technically. Oh yeah, we'll get there. We're gonna get. But there. <laughs> most, but for me, just if you want to go down to my soul, I'm always gonna choose New Hope because that's just ah, like that's like the smelling that whatever soap at mom's house. Whatever, whatever when you when you see or smell something <coughs> that takes you back to your childhood like and your home, I'm good. I'm perfect. And I, that's yeah. the one. And to be honest with you, that's the one I watched the most. Like I don't get tired of that movie. I will watch that one the most and not have to watch any other one. Like I don't want. Like sometimes I watch them back to back. Right. But a lot of times, if I just want to watch Star Wars film, that's my go-to. So Hands down. when I was a kid, we got cable for the first time. And this is way back in the day when cable was one fucking channel. Right. Oh, was that select TV or on TV? Uh, on TV. Oh, it I was remember that. One fucking channel. It, it was a switch that you turned on. Yep, and that on was a your box. cable TV, right? It was one fucking channel. And they used to send out this newsletter every month of what shows like or what's guide. Yeah, yeah, like a TV yeah, guide thing. Like a TV guide for it. And fucking Star Wars. Like. And at this point, as a kid, like, dude, VHS was barely coming out, right? right. And you had to be rich as fuck to $70 have a VHS. Right. Like, and Betamax was around. So I had never gotten to see, or at least I don't, yeah, yeah, I had never gotten to see the original Star Wars right. before. I knew about it, of course, right. the commercials, the toys. I knew oh, about yeah. it. And by the time these memories are coming around, I had already seen Empire and Return of the Jedi, right? Right. right. No, no, it was actually before Return of the Jedi. Yep. When that was a big fucking deal in my house, like oh, that, yeah. dude, Star Wars is gonna be on TV on Friday night yep. at eight o'clock. fucking clock. Yep. Dinner was ready. We everybody was in front of the TV yep. and we watched fucking Star Wars. Yep. Like, and it was like, to me, paid off. Yeah, I mean that. Th- I mean that's that was that first. Let me stop you right there. Let me ask you this: yep. Do you remember Hardware Wars coming out right before? Like, because I remember we had select. I TV had seen Hardware Wars. Hardware Wars would come out. They would always show Hardware Wars and then. Star Wars would start. I had seen Hardware Wars before. It. You've never seen Hardware Wars? Never. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, I've seen Spawn, it. Spawn, tell him. It's, break it, it down. It used to be funny. I haven't seen it since the oh, 70s. I mean, it, I mean it, it's... Okay, it's not for modern audiences, but right. if you grew up watching it, But I at, cool. at that time, I, I thought it was hilarious. And then they had, like... It would be the Hardware Wars, and then it would be, like, these fake trailers for movies, like... You know, they showed goes, Bambi, yeah, Bambi, Bambi and then God, versus Godzilla. First Godzilla, and then Godzilla steps on it. You but know. yeah, but yeah, it was always back in the day on select TV or on TV, depending what it was. Um, it would be Hardware Wars would always be showing first, and then it go into New Hope, and then it was just love. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I remember Hardware Wars. It was funny at that time. It was for kids. It was for our but generation. It Star Wars though, mm, it was just so just. So I got a question. Yeah, out of the Star Wars, you guys, we talk about the first three, and then we talk about now the meat and potatoes of four. The original trilogy. The original trilogy. So do you think that um, with the technology for making the first three was like the detriment to, I guess, the, the, the ones that, like the first three were all super high technology. Back then they had to be creative on how to make this world. They're, I mean, they're making claymation. They're doing all these little different whatever. Right. So yeah. They, they, they had to be creative. Yeah. yeah. The creative. So you think that they are taking the creative of it or does technology okay. help? Or I guess I'm going to give my answer and then I'll let these brothers speak. My thing is I think that George Lucas is the, uh, directing it is what made them not good. And the reason why I say that is because I was the, the documentary that came with the, the first DVD set, uh, Harrison Ford was like, you know what? He's great with all the, the, the graphics. He's horrible with people. He, he has two lines when he's directing an actor, faster and more intense, faster and more intense. And like, He's a great at all, you know, world building. It, you know, we wouldn't be here talking about it if his world building skills weren't up to par. They're above and beyond most people. So I'm not going to take that away from it. Just as a director, I think that gives the best 
one out of the whole franchise is with Irwin. I, I can never pronounce his last Kirsten. name. Kirstner. Empire. Is, yeah, Empire. So it's like. And I believe that was his instructor. That was his film teacher at one point. That, right. Yeah, it was. And right. he came back and got him. So, I mean, so that's what it is. I think the thing that killed the prequels had he maybe got different directors and then still, you know what I'm saying? You don't think so? No, because no. we you and I talked here, about this. Well, yeah, I know. I so, missed his presence on the, the 7, 8, and 9. Here, here's, here's what it okay. is, right? I may be. I may be saying the exact same thing you're saying, but a little bit different. Okay. Okay. I, the big difference is, is in 77, he was still relatively unknown, right? Right. We had THX yep. 1138. Right. And, and we had American Graffiti. graffiti. He so was hungry. at that point, you're a lot more open to criticism and critique in order to perfect your art. Okay. And then you jump 20, what, 25, 20, 25 years later. Roughly. And you go into pre-production for these prequels. Mm-hmm. He's now worth billions of dollars in right. charge of eight or nine companies. Right. His hand, he, basically, it, Lucasfilm touches ninety-nine percent of the films that are released and distributed in, in the world, either by right. special effects or sound. Sound, right? Right. right. All, all of a sudden, you're you're the king of the hill, and people a won't criticize you because you're the king of the hill, and and b. You, you're you're at the top. You're at least you think you are at the top of your game. That you don't take criticism, but criticism is one of the most critical things when it comes to art. I mean, you guys were just talking about it earlier with, right. with hip hop, right? Like if you don't bounce these ideas off of your peers and your equals to right. get what can be fixed, your your product's just gonna it's gonna it's you in a vacuum. Now, you know? Joe, let me jump in so, there and so ask that, you. That is what I think the problem. That, to answer your question. That is what the problem I think was was episode one, two, and, and, and then another thing before Vito goes, not, not, right. not enough criticism. But let me writers. jump in there though too, because E and I had talked about this, and let me ask you this though: we had discussed that Vito. originally during the original trilogy, Vito. his wife. There you go. His wife and um. Th- that was about to say that you got it. Was it? But that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, she was the one who helped with the editor. Like the, the, the original editors helped made those movies as sharp as they right. are. Right. Originally, her wife, the screenwriter, and think whoever did the editing in the first three films, right? They were the ones who would say, "No, George, this doesn't work," and blah right. blah blah. Where right. he didn't have the them there for the right, prequels. and that was crucial because a lot of the stuff from, especially Attack of the Clones, needed to be whittled down. the the love the love uh, the courtship of Anakin and um, Padme needed to be whittled down and just get like the points out, and you know if they had some sort of chemistry, kind of try to do whatever it can to, to bring it out. So that that was the point I was going to make, is the wife... Um, the She uh, wasn't there. Right, the wife wasn't there. However, the though... And I, I don't know if it's because Lucas surrounded himself with only yes-men, right. or because that's what his was. stature was so high that the people who were around him were afraid to criticize I would him. Have because to be, he's the genius. You know, yeah, at that point, no. he's, the, he's the genius. Right. But I, I think that his... And it's exactly... his His wife at the time was... Saying, "Hey, you need to sharpen this and you change." It's just, it's just like a hip hop. When you guys are, are laying down tracks and you're going back over it, you you say, mm, I don't, "Try this, this line needs like a little this. bit more. Try it like this. Try it like that's what needed to happen." I don't think Lucas got enough of it. But um, no, I, I I would say this about you know any critiques about George. I don't have any. I mean, could te- technically can there be? And do I disagree with Joe and Spawn? No, I agree with both of them. But at the same time, that's the father. Good, bad, or indifferent. If he didn't do it, we wouldn't have it. So I take the good with the bad because right. at the end of the day, that's what the father made. That's what I'll take because that's what I like. You know, and I, I, I accept it. And right. honestly, I think that's why Revenge of the Sith got so much better. Right. Is because at that point, you get the whole world saying, fuck Jar Jar, fuck a mullet, you know, fuck this, fuck that. Right. And, and George is finally, oh, wow, maybe I need to open my ears up a little bit more. And right. I think that's why Sith came out so much better. Right, right. So now the creme de la creme empire strikes back and it's just to me that's not a more perfect movie even its Uh, flaws even its flaws are perfection right so i this one of my earliest film i remember being in line and it felt like we were in line for like all day and it just it might have been 20 minutes it might have been 45 minutes me and my mom we was on the grand concourse in the bronx and uh we were gonna go see it and i just remember just that line being just around the the, the wall and it was just crazy like all these people are gonna see the star Wars you know like i'm thinking it's just my little toy world and it just made it so much bigger you know what i mean and i remember being fucking scared of um of darth vader like um you know speak we, you know this is a, an originally a horror podcast you want to talk horror four years old seeing your hero 
get his ass whipped by Darth Vader. Sure. And like he's not even he's just toying with he's him. He's toying with him. He's just right. throwing little shit at him. You know, like kind of like when you're you're slap boxing your pops and he's not even like really using his you know his best hands and he's just playing with you. You know what I'm saying? And that's really what it was. Um, so I just think that out of all of them, all eleven, that is just the perfect embodiment of that whole franchise. You got everybody right character wise. Um, you know, Luke is learning. Y- Yoda wasn't annoying. Like, you know, like George Luke Lucas. Yoda's never annoying. No, no, but you know, it, it could have been it, had he like even George Lucas says it. Had Yoda gone wrong, that movie would have. You know what I'm oh, saying? absolutely, absolutely, you know? and it would have been Jar Jar. You could have not done Jar Jar back in 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 '83 yeah. and fuck up like that. You know what I mean? Um, so I mean, he could have just it would it could have killed the whole franchise. Um, so he, I mean, it was just I have the, the there's been a million things said and so much dissertation about Empire Strikes Back. I'm not even doing even a tiny bit of justice, but it's just movie perfection from start to finish i mean introducing new characters as well boba fett that became one of my favorite character and then lando became another one of my favorite characters you know hello chewbacca you know i've been waiting all day to say this fucker (laughs) hello chewbacca you know it's just you know it's just just the whole it's just perfect dude i i got no other words you know what about you joe no same same there's even even his flaws are perfection like it the the movie from start to finish, well, I can rewatch it over and over yep. again, and, and I'm I still engaged. Like I don't wander off. Yeah, I put Sith on or put something else on, and I'm kind of just you know. Right. But Empire, I'm I'm in it. I'm like it's yep. committed. The, the it's just it plays out so perfect. Mm-hmm. Again, the world building, you know, this ice planet. Like, what is this? What are these yep. fucking things? They're, they're brand new shit. The Tauntauns. When yep. you first see, I remember being a kid seeing Tauntauns and like. But what the what fuck, the fuck, fuck are that? those? Like you yep. know the space yeti, yeah, the space <laughs> yeti, right? The, the, um, the, the yeah, and I remember back in the original cut of Empire, like that whole scene where Luke's upside down, and I used to have that playset too. Like, Me too. Oh, so I that, yeah, that, that was dope. That was dope. That, that uh, when he's upside down, the ice. I remember being a kid and, and like. The way it was edited back then was scarier. Than it was scary as yeah. fuck yes. because all it's very Hitchcockian. It was all in your head right. what was happening, right? And I remember never understanding like what the fuck is that yeah. thing right. that was in, in in the in the snow? Yeah. And then you know, okay, so going from there, and then the Yoda reveal, right? Right. One of the more magical moments. Genius. Frank Oz made a piece of rubber yep. come to life, and it's not part of pop culture. I mean, right. it is. I, yes. I I can't talk enough about about that movie. You know, going to Dagobah. Yep. The the romance that builds between Han and Leia. Han and Leia. Yeah. yeah. C three PO's comic relief. Yep. T- perfect timing. So I want to, we're going to talk about comedy timing when we get to the the sequels. But <laughs> the comedy timing in Empire is perfect. Yep. Right. The reveal at the end is like is the nobody greatest reveal saw ever. this coming yeah. like nobody saw nobody. this coming not even the crew members because it was done uh, last right. minute yeah. and the the you know you got a little taste of saber fighting in a new hope and it was still geriatrics you know yeah, right, saber right. fighting and then you come to this movie you're like holy yeah. shit yeah, like look at, look at what this he's how did he jump like that i remember being a kid and not yeah. understanding what the force was right and see how does he do that like i don't yeah. get it yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's super so that whole movie, so the problems with it and the flaws with it, right? You, know, you ask about flaws, mm. is Luke, w- when you look at the movie, right? And I got something in my head cannon here. When you look, Luke's, Luke's on Dagobah for like three days. Right. right. It seems like four days. Like he got all that training in four days. Like, fuck, I wish I could take a seminar. I'm glad you <laughs> said that. that much shit in three days. It was like, I'm glad you YouTube. said that because we're going to come back to that when we talk about the sequels. Okay. No, we will. Yeah. Well, I think there's, there's some stuff in the sequels. Uh, uh, anyway, we'll get there. So. It, you know, in my in my head, canon, you know, the the Millennium Falcon's warp drive is down, right? Right. So in my head, I feel like it took a month for Solo to get to Cloud uh, City out of the stomach. Yeah. No, no, out of the stomach was probably a week. Okay. Right, and then like another three or four weeks to get from wherever they were to get to Bespin. Right. To me, it makes more sense. So then it's like, okay, well, Luke was on Dagobah for like a month and a half, you know, right. training. So even then, that's not long enough right. in my mind, right. but still. It makes a little more sense than the two or three days that it seems like, right. you know, he's there. And then, you know, getting to Cloud City, like when you're a kid, like there's a, like a city in the cloud. Like right. there's no, I like what the is that? I've never seen this before. The cinematography was done great. If I can, uh, if I can, this is my two cents on that. So you had the New Hope 
You had cocaine in the 70s, disco. People were, it was, a, it was a party time in that era, late 70s. And then the somberness of the 80s kick in. Empire was, was almost shot like a horror film because it was so dark. It was vicious. You know, at the, turn of the, at the turn of the decade, the high came back down. You know what I mean? The party was over. Reaganomics. You know, Reaganomics. The rebels were under one run, and they were getting their ass whipped. Nothing was going right. The hyperdrive, you said, wasn't working. Solo couldn't get shit done. Skywalker was, you know, separated from his friends, training. Dak got blood, fucked up real quick. <laughs> you know, no, but no, they were being hunted, and they were getting their ass whipped. So the party that happened in Episode Four, like the decade that's kicking off now, is no longer there. Look at the dark shadows. Everything was ferocious now. You know what I mean? The high came down. Now you realize the shit was real. Luke got his hand cut off. Um... Solo was, you know, frozen in carbonite. Right. Nothing went right. Your, and for, your, your heroes got their ass whipped. You know, and it's and crazy. Back. For a lot of people, that's how the 80s started off for those coming down from the high of the 70s. And it felt like it was in tune with that. And that's how this decade started off. You know what I mean? Right. Look at your horror films. Look at the films in general. The films in the very first, and from 1980 to 81, were very somber, very serious. Right. Cutter's Way. Um... Uh, that's just first Friday. The first well, Friday the thirteenth. Well, that was the meat and potatoes. But if you look at like you know, or Gorky Park, a lot of films from nineteen eighty to eighty one, very serious, very somber, hardcore. By um Paul um he wrote um Taxi Driver. Paul um Schrader. Schrader. Thank you. Having seen your moment, a lot of those films are very hard, very gritty, very serious, detached from the party that the seventies was. And I felt Empires was a part of that. The, the stark contrast between the two films. Are beautiful and it's just amazing and I love empires for that. Oh, absolutely. And you know, and that's just for me. That's all I got to say because there's nothing else I can say to add right. on what yeah. should already be common knowledge to those out there. Right. What about you? Yeah, Empire. Um, yeah, I, I'd say it's the best one. It's it. It doesn't like. There's not a far gap for me between either New Hope or Jedi, but it is. It does rank higher. You know, like I said the introduction of the systems and the planets. Deg of a system, right? Um, is incredible hoth right yeah. the the time time you guys already covered all that i mean it's just general knowledge um vader you know oh, yeah. revealing that you know and who also he was how ruthless vader was on this one too he's murking out his captains left and right yeah exactly well you got vader with the with the helmet off now too you see oh, a little that, glimpse yeah, of that, that right my mind as a kid yeah. I, I was like oh shit it don't come on. yeah you know it was a very somber movie when you think about it yeah. Very yeah. somber. Like you said, you saw his battle scars. You brought up a good point. You see him choke killing the commanders left and right for their fuck ups. Yep. You see him with the helmet off. You see, you know, after the party's over with, you see the cleanup afterwards. You well, see- yeah, exactly. And then you got you got Lando, right? Who is a good, is a, is a good dude, you know. But I think he was forced to do something. To do a hard that, decision right. to, to betray to, his friend. To betray his friend. So I don't really, you know, I've heard, I've had conversations with people saying that's fucked up, this and that. But I mean, but he came back what do you do? You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Well, he, he, he how do you sacrifice, how do you like save your friend? But then you have all these millions of people underneath you. I'm sure that weighed against him that were looking to him. It's like, I don't think that was an easy way for him one way or another. And he was fucked from the beginning. Because right. Vader it was like, and them. He was like one guy or the whole Cloud City could have got evaporated. And Vader would have got them, them boys anyway. Right. So, you know. And yep. he, and you know, what, but he threw his everything he had away for for Han, right? And risk his life to get him back because he had to go undercover, right? For that, you know, let's face it, the Huts were gangsters, right? And he had to infiltrate that. So, oh, you're talking about return later, yeah? Oh. So, but in terms of just you know, who, well, just redemption, who, who, yeah, part of Lando's redemption, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, no, but that's just, just perfection. Return, on the other hand, so. Oh. I remember waiting for Return, and I even remember, there's a movie, I can't remember the name, Vito, you know it. The first time I saw the trailer for Revenge of the, the Return of the Jedi, it was actually Re- Revenge of the Jedi, but the trailer that I saw it on, I remember it was that video game movie that's kind of like Porky's, you just got the Blu-ray a few Oh, years. Joysticks! Joysticks. So Love that parents, movie! You know, Puerto Ricans don't believe in babysitters, we take our kids to the movies and shit, and if they run around or they cry, you just take them out, whip them, and then bring them back. So, my parents took me to see Joysticks. And uh, that was you know, a I'm hard sure R comedy. It's a very sir. hard, but you know, the fuck babysitters. <laughs> um, you know, so we uh, well, titties were all over that film. But the thing is, is that I would, I probably would, I probably fell asleep like maybe you know thirty minutes in. I don't know, but who knows? But anyway, so I do remember the trailer for at the time it was called. Revenge wait, wait, they showed a the Star Wars trailer for an R rated yeah sex comedy. Yeah, uh, that, that's where and we I know first saw in it. the eighties sex comedies. <laughs> 
would be well, like this was a small ass theater. It wasn't like the AMC's that would come later on in the eighties. This was a small ass theater, but that was the first time I saw it. I was so ready. I was curious about these Ewoks. Um, I didn't know. I mean, I just you know because a lot of times the figures would start come out earlier. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I I would look at the backs and I would just like, oh shit, you know, because you see the like Luke with the gun. But like I don't remember that scene in the movie. You know what I'm saying? Like remember that like in the on the packaging of the well, okay. That, so the gun was the one he took from one of the right, guards. Right, but, but so, that so was they the froze gun. it. Yeah, they froze yeah, it yeah. for the picture. So, but it, just a lot of shit. So I was ready, and then so when I saw it, it was me, my mom, my stepdad, and my Theo. And uh, my Theo had hated it. So I love my Theo. Watched. Right, so I was like, "Yeah, I wasn't crazy about it neither." And then, like, I saw the commercial on TV a few weeks ago. I said, "Mom, can you take me again to see Return of the Jedi?" <laughs> no, you hated it. Remember, you didn't like it. So I was like, "Fuck." So anyway, uh, but <laughs> that's what so you anyway, get. Anyway, that's what that's you what get. I get. But I, I actually, out of all the three, the original three, this is the one I liked the least. Um, I felt that it was kind of kitty. goofy and kitty. Uh, especially when they're killing, it was supposed to be some serious, the final battle. And it was, it was kind of like up the space aspect with Lando oh, the dude, the best is, is amazing. The you best know, dog fight is the best dog fight is, is in return of Jedi. Absolutely. Um, so uh, that part had me, the Ewoks and all that shit going on at the bottom was kind of just, it just, even at seven, eight years old, I thought it was corny. Which I is, agree. And I agree with the, I, when I saw, it, I was like. I thought it was some bullshit. Right. I, 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 no, no seven year old should be looking at a movie like this is some bullshit. Right. So, but I fucking loved it, <laughs> and that's fine. And but that's, he, no, but no, he no, was younger fine. though. He was younger than us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he was younger you than know, us. But we see, we got done watching Empire, so we were like, no, I, I expect you know, no seven year old should be like, I expect better than this. That being said, though, I may be the only person who feels this way. I do believe the special editions of Return of Jedi made it a much better movie Ooh, no I, way I, no I like it now I think it's sharper it's not as kitty I mean you can only do uh, so much minute, you can only out. do so wait a minute time out is that there's, a, put there's a Muppet in the middle of the, the scene where ja, uh, where Jabba uh, uh, the music scene the yeah. bow, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, Clearly, he likes the song because he's well, like, he, I knows, have to he knows the beat for beat. I thought you were going to start rhyming, son. I Because I, I watch all of it like, you know, like a maniac. But. I will say, okay, I did like the original um, Java scene with them singing as opposed to the special edition, but that's the only one grape I have, and I'm okay with it. The, the Java but, scene was money. The Java scene was money, and then the Luke and Vader scene was just, here's all my money, here's every dollar I have, but you there know, you go. But you, you know, know what I'm though, saying? Because it was just, the payoff was there. Oh, no, it was. You know what I'm saying? But even from a cinematography aspect, it was. Gr- I remember it being grainier. It just had a grainy look to it, as opposed to, like, New Hope and Empire. They just, the film stock just looked fucking dirty. It's been cleaned up since with the special editions, but the original version was like, God, why does this movie look so rugged? I Were you like okay that, with though. them putting in like uh, Hayden? That. Huh? Were you okay with them putting in Hayden's Force Ghost? Oh, yeah. I was actually good. I'm totally good with that. Um, <laughs> I'm, for continuity, for how they explain how the Force works, I was good with it. I had no issue with it, but that's just me as a fan. Did, did you ever see what Phantom Guy, uh, I mean, fam, uh, Family Guy made fun of uh, that scene? No, where they do. Okay, so you see uh, Obi-Wan, and then you see Yoda, and then Hayden goes, Hi, I'm Hayden Christensen. <laughs> <laughs> But no, the I remember seeing when the Emperor bust out his electric. Oh, that was so dude, dope. I was like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's gonna happen? Because last time my you know, two of my my hero got his arm cut off and my other hero got put in ice, you know, like I, I didn't know what was gonna happen. So yeah. that aspect had me on the edge of my seat, but it's just the Ewok thing. I never liked them. I okay. just never I never had the the Ewok village in as a kid. I did. I, I kinda was like <laughs> That was my shit. <laughs> my mom gave it away to some Parks and Rec a few years later. But... Oh, oh but, bitch. Anyway, I, mean, so like, I was like, oh, bad move. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, y'all. I thought the special edition smoothed out some of the roughness mm. of the original version. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I like it better now than I did initially. So you just don't. You don't oh, even. Just the, just the Ewok part. I'm not familiar. I'm not happy with, and I don't like the way they portrayed Solo. I felt that I don't. I mean, unless Solo had Solo had some brain damage after he was in the Carbonite scene or some shit, because he just seemed like a parody of himself. Mm. Like he was kind of phoning it in. Maybe it was just Harrison Ford, because I know by then he kind of got on his high horse and he wanted to die and blah blah blah. But he's he been just, wanting to do that since the first film, though. Right. So I mean, I just felt that it wasn't the same Han Solo that I got from. 
the first two movies, and that's you know, and then the Ewoks things were real corny. But Joe, you know. what do you think? What do you think, Joe? I loved it. The 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 build up. I love the Ewoks. I love. Yep, nub. Uh, yeah, I love nub. I, I agree. I I agree. I agree that it's out of the f- original first three. It's my least favorite of the three. But that bar's really fucking high because I love that movie. You know, so. There's nothing I the special editions I don't even mind like I miss Nub Nub and I miss the original uh, song of Max Rebo band right right I I miss those I had the Max because there's band a, too. a lot of nostalgia there for me right. at least with those songs you know dude like Yub Yub they play that shit on the radio right you know like it's like when they're doing the no, top no. ten countdown like Yub no, 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 it was no, no. on the fucking radio well remember Nucleus with um do we call the 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 Ewoks on the wiki song it was wiki 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 that one from, yeah Nucleus from eighty four yeah jam on it jam on it yeah then we called it the Ewok song because that sounded like the Ewoks they would say really? wiki 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 yeah because you know one of the Ewoks his name was Wicked yeah uh, so Wicked W Wicked or Wicked, Wicked Warwick yeah but yeah the so I mean from I remember, I remember being a kid and seeing Luke walk in mm. with a hood, you know, in Jabba's palace. And that was and fucking I, dope. And I remember my first thought was, "Fuck, he turned to the dark side." Like, oh, oh is that what you? Shit. Okay. Oh, you, I, I never. That's thought interesting. Yeah, point, it was yeah. like, and then he was force choking motherfuckers. Yeah, like he was. Yeah, he was hard. He was yeah. dressed all in black, and he's walking in, and I was like, and so I was like, he's he's bad as fuck now. But I thought, damn, like we like, what happened? You know, and. <laughs> <laughs> and then going from there to getting all, all the band back together right that like was dope everybody when you see all the characters on screen at the same time yeah, that's that like oh great. fuck yeah great yeah. they're all yep. back together because they hadn't been back together since star yep. wars you exactly. know so i see them all back together that scene was great yep um i remember being a kid the special effects of showing you know Indoor, like a hologram yeah. spinning like what the fuck like that is crazy right. like and then you know, going from there, to Ewoks. I love the Ewoks. The speeder. The speeder. Oh, the speeder. Dope. Oh yeah, the speeders were. Speeders were dope. Oh yeah, that dude. blew me away as a kid. Dope. Like it blew it, it, it me holds away. up. It still holds up. Oh, it oh is, yeah, it is great. And then you know, from speeders to like the whole Space build life? up to the final confrontation between Luke and Vader. Mm-hmm. Great I mean, emotion. Yeah, yeah. To this to this day. So my father is when, truly when, dead. Yeah. When he said that line, I when was like, Vader, Ooh. When Vader looks at the Emperor, then looks at his son, mm. and looks at the Emperor, and then picks him up, like, I still get... Mm-mm. Yep, me too. Oh my but, god, but, like... But what about... What, <laughs> do, you, do you like when they put... No! I don't... I... I, I so, I look past it, like... Yeah, so do I. It's just I, one I, of these, like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's cringy. I, I understand why he did it, but it's, it's okay. not Actually, worth it. You know what, though? I'm okay with it because it, 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 sho- it. it shows that he finally gonna be, he's going to do that change. He's going to do that life-turning change and be like, you know what? This is done. Yeah, but he didn't need to vocalize it. Yeah, His action yeah. enough. I'm okay with it. I mean, I, 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 I didn't, it doesn't, to me, it's an, I'm indifferent. He didn't have to be there. I'm okay with it, but I'm okay without it, too. Didn't they pull that bring my shuttle line, too, and change it with oh. prepare my ship or something along those lines? Yeah, right. an empire. So. It was an empire. Yeah. But you know what I like though during the fight scene between him and Vader and Luke was the music how they just emphasized oh, the emotion yeah. of that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I just thought that was, you know, we haven't seen that since like Sith, you know, or well, it was like a baseline or something or, was or, or, oh. we have or, let me rephrase that. Sith has, you know, was and to some degree why Rise of Skywalker, Sith and Rise Sith being, of course, first on that comparison, were the closest enough to get into that emotional impact of Vader and Luke with that music and all that. You hear that, you feel the emotion of that, right? Because it was sad because of you know, and I was telling Spawn the other day. I go to me, it felt like Vader didn't want to fight his son. Like he was already turning, and you can tell like he was only trying to act a certain way in front of the Emperor's eyes, but he didn't have it in him to hurt his own son because he let his son do all the ass whooping. Vader could have easily fucked him up, right? But Vader was like, no. He was just letting it go, you know what I mean? And he saw how his son was changing. He just didn't have the heart in it. And when the Empire, the Emperor was, was burning him with the with the, um, dark electricity, mm-hmm. Vader finally said, enough is enough, and finally tur- turned into his master that he couldn't do before. He said, I'm doing this now. Right, right. You know, and, I, and in that type of context, I like that movie plays better for me now than it did when I was a child. Okay. And that's right. why, and I do think the special Same edition... Here smoothes out the rough edges i mean i do have like i said i agree with spawn you know i'm not i don't hate the ewoks i just felt like it made it too kiddie-ish and I, but I understand why because they yeah but every more to have, who says that loves baby yoda 
I love Baby Yoda. Well, first of all, <laughs> here's the thing, though. Ewoks is too cute. It doesn't fit in, but Baby Yoda, Yoda I never yeah. seen I love okay, Baby Yoda. Yoda. I love Baby Yoda. I never seen no Ewok choke, uh, force choke any motherfucker or burn people and be like, you know That's what? That's true. You done. That's what Yoda will, yeah, but Baby you Yoda him, will you fuck You see him, him defeat an army. Like, okay, I got issues with I wanna, that. I, I want to hug Baby Yoda. The, 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 I don't want to hug him. So, Here's the thing: sticks and stones against They're these imperial walkers. Dude. The walks are yeah. cannibals, bro. Why would you want? I know, no, 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 no. Understand? No one catches that. These too. things will yeah, fucking they eat the stormtroopers with the with throwing rocks at the stormtroopers. No one, yeah. and yeah. even as a kid, it's like no one notices that those dudes died. Like they ate them. Like they yeah. were gonna eat. They were Han gonna and eat Luke. Han Solo and Luke. Right. They're, 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 they eat humans, dude. That was fucking. Now, dude. had they made that, that would be a nice little horror movie. And you see them gnawing on it, like at the end of the you know, Family Guy. But <laughs> dude, that was a Green Inferno, dude. If it wasn't for Lucas in there. Yeah. Or what's the other one? Uh, Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> oh, that's for a different time. Ewa- I don't. know. Ewok Holocaust. Hey, 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 anyone watching this does not want to know about Cannibal ho- um, Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust or this, Cannibal- this is a Cannibal horror Holocaust. podcast. We're just talking about stars this one time. Oh my, so my, you- uh, my bad, folks. Yeah, I'm yeah, so yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, we go back to horror. <laughs> oh, we can do that all day. I, I got that shit by the pile. You let me know. So, all right. But yeah, so no, but uh, I, in hindsight, I'm good with Return of the Jedi. I, you know, I I just didn't like, I just, I don't know, the Ewoks were just corny, but they are cannibals and they do eat humans. You know what I'm saying? So, I love them. Mike, what do you think? What's your, what's your take? I mean, like I said, everything's context. So for me, Jedi was um, one of my, one of my favorites, man. It's pretty close to Empire for me. Um, like you talked about the end scene there when um, you know Luke's hiding right during the yep. saber cool. fight, you know that bass line or whatever orchestra yeah. type of instrument they yep. use that really brought out the emotion, man. That really mm-hmm. kind of hit home, you know. How Sister. music works well with that to convey that emotion, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the music's a character in the Star Wars franchise for sure. And you could, and it's funny when you watch it even now. I see like Vader not really wanting to do it. He's just he has to test him because the, his imp, the emperor's his master's watching him. You know what I mean? Right. But Vader, you could tell, it's kind of, to me at least, he's just kind of just taking his time because he doesn't want to go through. You know right. when you have to do something, but you don't want to do it, so you're not rushing for it, towards it? Right. Like, even when Vader threw his lightsaber at him, it, his heart wasn't in it. Mm-hmm. And right. he was he only shit. And he only said shit to him to get him pissed because he didn't want to kill him. Right. And he let, you know, even that small moment, that the small interaction, oh, so you made a lightsaber. Like, you could tell, like, this is my seed. And, like, I think everything that he lost with Padme was coming back, like, Yep. Like you could tell him, like, I I did something. This is wrong. I I've I lost this. You know, he his regret started to come in. You know what I mean? Right. His son is a Jedi like him, and he re- I think that's when he realized I fucked up. Right. Like the the, the sense of regret because he was not he was you could tell like in his tone of voice he was very soft with him. He was like, right. so you admit that I'm your father. You know, right, like, right. That little thing. It was kind of sure. like that, 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 that talk, and it's like, like and it's like you could tell like. He would. What do I say? He's like I've. I think I've that missed scene out. is one of the most underrated scenes in the whole franchise. Oh, it is. The 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 the, the, the elevator scene from because, because it the, shows his human side definitely. again. Yeah, it shows Anakin's human side. That wasn't Vader. That was Anakin. Is like, and you can yeah. see like, like just the, the regret. The just regret. the tidbit when Luke gets on that uh, gets on the elevator to go to the Death Star right. and Vader turns around and puts his hands on the rails, just like yep. reflecting for a minute. You're yep. like, Fuck. no, no, no touches. And those that's the first time, at least if you were a kid watching this in the 80s, that's the first time you saw any sort of empathy, yep. or emotional humanism. response, or humanism to you this robot. You didn't get that from Empire? Like, like I thought when, like, when no, he, not at all. See, when, when, he, when he walked Empire, he was kind of cocky. Was just power. Power. No, just, no, no, no. Yeah. Tough love, power. I think. So when Luke... Like, so when douchebag he, dad, like, no, no, I haven't yeah. seen you in... Exactly. You know, yeah. I just yeah. said, hey, time. come with me and we'll go fuck up this guy. And yeah, yeah. There was I, nothing... It was still selfish. I disagree, because at the end of Empire, when the final shot you see... Lord Vader walking with his hands behind his back. I think that's when he started thinking. Again. That is when he did. That's but the I'm end. Right. About, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. It, it, caught, it, it had to be when he cut off the hand. He did the reveal. And he saw how he was just devastated that this person is the father. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, yeah. you don't know. Like, you know, like, fuck, damn, am I that bad? That's when it came. That no and then him falling. That's what caused the yep. change in Vader. Yeah, had he I, been like, oh shit, you're my pops? Oh shit. You know what I mean? No, well, no, then it would have been a different no, story. That, but it, he was like, fuck, no, everything, not you. That's impossible. So that's what caused the humanization to Vader because he was so crushed that, hey, yo, I'm your dad. Instead of being excited about it, he was actually just. And tormented. what he had from Padme between Empire and Jedi, all those emotions probably came back. I'm sure because he spent so much time trying to push those and bury those. 
he finally came back to the surface. Now, now real quick, um, so there's a thing you said it to me, right? Where, um, all right, so you know the famous scene where Obi Wan's gonna kill, um, you know, Obi Wan and, and and Anakin have their big fight scene, and he goes, "I have the high ground," and you know, you you underestimate my power, and he flips and he cuts them up, yeah. right? So there's a scene in Empire which I just he sent it to me, and I just caught it where Luke. J- jumps out of the hole and then he's on top of the stairs and Vader's climbing up. He goes, Obi Wan has taught you well, and it's because Luke had the high ground, you know. Said, but Luke didn't oh. realize it. But that's as a little. Yeah, I think that it's from Jedi during the the final battle because the steps, and then he's walking on the oh catwalk. Jedi, yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, walking on the catwalk, and it was just like, yeah, yeah. he's he's kind of you know, yeah, he's Obi-Wan coming up. Taught yeah. you well. I thought. Yeah. You know, it may not have been on purpose or whatever, but it was really, but it was now, a really cool it, scene. It, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. in the context now, it makes... Right. You could see... And the films, the sequels, well, the trilogies themselves have always been about a certain rhyme to them and a certain mirror and symmetry between all three of them. Right. Okay. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the sequels. So now... Yeah, seven. Now, this is the one that I hate the most out of the whole franchise. Okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, oh you've been pissed. You look at Joe's, you got Joe's <laughs> yeah. Ivy right there. goes, what? Motherfucker said what? Okay, so... <laughs> Wow. The biggest thing with me is this one is it was just very for it seemed very forced. It didn't seem natural. It seemed it's just that I didn't like the dialogue. I thought out of all the lightsaber scenes in all of the the, the franchise, this had, was the weakest. Um, I just didn't like the characters at that time. Like I I I liked them, the thought of them. The way they came off, I just thought it was horrible. Like Jar Jar with his box of mystery shit. Like, and then like even to this day, that, that's why I call. When him, he says Jar Jar, he's talking about JJ Abrahams. Yeah, for those Jar Jar's JJ. Oh, okay. that's what the JJ stands for. Sorry. So uh, it just, I don't know. I just it, to me, it was a, a bad remake of a, a New Hope. New Hope. Yeah. New Hope. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then like Starbase Killer is like the King Hippo of the space trilogy where one major hit knocks out this big monster thing and it was just ridiculous and i just the dialogue like i'm in charge phasma with with finn oh, yeah. and it just you know finn was whacked to me yeah, yeah you know it's just the dialogue was just subpar it's like a, it, it felt like i was wa- when my son was like eight or nine and i'm watching him play with his toys and that's what it felt like yeah the dialogue you know what i'm saying where it was just i, I just to this day i think it's the weakest one i just it does nothing for me it's hard to get through and i just hate it i just Okay. I don't know. I, no, I know you ahead. love be, it. Go, so, go be honest. See, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> look, I, 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 I like, I like it a lot. I, I love. Look, I love all Star Wars, but I like, right. I like, and that's how I feel too. Uh, For- Force Awakens, I like, I like, I liked how it introduced. It. I thought at, up to that point, it was visually the prettiest of all the Star Wars films. I mean, that scene where Ray's coming out of that the. The broken down Star Destroyer, which is right. I That's mean, the dope. cinematography there is, I mean, it's outrageous, right? right. And I'm not uh, that that is never right. th- th- I that was, that's never like a flaw with the Star Wars movies, like how it looks and the the, the special effects is never a detriment. And that's always going to be a positive. But I'm talking character wise, and so I the, love Ray. Well, and here's, I love the, here's, here's the Go thing: ahead. as we're talking about these movies, right? Like Star Wars, it really is kind of like the Abrahamic religions of the world, right? Like they all worship the same gods, like Jews. Christians, Muslims, right? It's the same God. The same God. It's the same God in all three of those religions. But it's all the details that everybody dis- disagrees about. Right. And it's almost like that's why people are so passionate about Star Wars is, yeah, we all love Star Wars, but we all disagree on the details. And right. I think that that's important, at to least understand. in my mind, to, to understand that, yeah, not everybody agrees on the details, but we all, at the end of the day, we all love Star Wars, right? right? So. <clears throat> For for the Force Awakens, our, my first impressions when I first saw it was like, "Is this Star Wars? Like, I don't know what's going on here. Like, this is mm. this is different, right? You know, it's just different." Um, I loved all the characters though. I loved how we got introduced to them. Right. I love how it played out. I loved everything about the movie except that the payoff for the MacGuffin to get to Luke was you know the two and a half seconds at the end of the film. Which I thought was a, an incredible waste, especially now in hindsight. Yep. You know, when we get to done talking about all three of these movies, I want to talk just a little bit how I thought I think these movies should have went. Right. Sort of should have went, but so just a, as it stands alone, Force Awakens, 
it's good. The music, John Williams. I mean, he's the but true god. Ray's theme all. is dope. Right. I thought Ray's theme. Ray's was theme. Really, yeah. It's a, if, and if you really listen to Ray's theme, it's again, it's a sh- shout out to West. It's a Western theme. You think about those 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 riffs on a guitar. It, it's totally a Western style right. song. Anyway, so a lot of the stuff that I thought was going to be answered never got answered. But I it, it, like it set up all these mysteries and all this. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is this right. is dope. And that's like, what J.J. Abrams uh, is I'm, notorious for. I'm, I'm, he I'm did into it in Alias. And he did that in Lost. Go ahead. And I'm, I'm into it, you know, and I, I was into it. So for me, Force Awakens w- was great. I love Ray. I love I love Poe. I love Finn. I love how they introduced it. Everything about it, I thought, was excellent. It was excellent. So for me, as you know, I hated, you know, each time I saw one, I, I had, had um, I had my um, my opinions about him. I will say this. So I when we saw the opening weekend, I liked it. But there was something part of me that wasn't too completely sold on it. So I went to go see it again, and then I started to hate it. Um, as I am right now in 2020, I'm like, you're hot, you're cold, I'm in between with it. I actually really do like it. I think the characters were well-developed, well-written. Um, my only, You think my, the dialogue was well-written? I thought the dialogue was great. I had no problem with the dialogue at all. I think it was great. Same, I thought it was good. Um, my... For what He's, I have to knock I'm it for, Phasma. but but my, I'm in charge, Phasma. But see, here and I'm gonna get into this. Solo, what's this? Wait, 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 wait. What's this? God damn it! Let me speak, boy. But this is my this is my concern about it. And, we'll, and you, we've talked about this before too. Um, too close to a New Hope. I I mean, I like the idea of Star Killer, but it kind of felt like when you go to Disneyland and you ride some the, the Star Wars theme rides and they're just the film things to go with that ride. It felt a little too Disney esque for me in terms of. You weren't bringing something new. You're just kind of reveling in what we've already had. Right. I like the idea of Star Killer. Um, I thought that could have been done a little bit differently. I le- and, the- and then the attack on Star Killer again, too close to home to New Hope. Um, but that's my only that's my only right. grievances with the movie. Um, I like the characters. I liked how I spoke to the millennials. To me, I saw a lot of millennial attributes in these characters, and I'm good with that. Like what? Like give me an example. Of what? Like the interplay with Finn and um, and Ray. Oh. Oh. I like the cockiness of, of Poe. I like the the frustration of, of Kylo. Like, why isn't this going to plan? Like, you know, damn it, this why isn't going? Why you know? I'm told this was supposed to happen. It doesn't go this way, and now you throw a fit because you were told you're supposed to be given. You know, by participating. Everything's supposed to go to plan. So now, those, 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 those are just right. personality attributes I saw. I'm not saying it's for every millennial, but it's just something that I see in common with the younger generation. And I'm good with that. I felt these these actors had great chemistry. No, the acting was I I, su- I, I, I agree with Joe brought up a good point. But the, the dialogue to, was trash. But see, that's that's subjective. You didn't like the dialogue. I thought it was fine. I thought it was great. I thought the cinematography was on point. I like the little touches. Like You brought up a good point. The little touches of yeah. just Ray going down You know, the, uh, the at-at. I thought that was brilliant. And, you know, we've always well, it was a star star destroyer, wasn't it? A star yeah, destroyer. Yeah. Okay, my, my mistake on that. But I liked how we're not finally getting to the kids or the grandkids, depending on the perspective of, of the characters. Um, I don't know. I can't just like I said. I agree with both these gentlemen to the right of me. Um, good, bad, or indifferent. See, no, uh, but it was to me my least favorite of the three sequels, though. But I thought. I love it regardless. To me, it's like, man, it's like the Eminem CD. Like, don't sell me the same thing again, man. Like, don't don't give me New Hope and then give me New Hope 2.5. You know? Yes, like, thank you. It's, it's basically the same movie, the same, everything's whatever. Middleman sp- I didn't smoking. actually like that, um, uh, I can't think of the girl now. Right, Ray. 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 I like the fact that she had utilized the force immediately. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, she's just in there, just Jedi it up. Like, yes, oh, and I agree with you, and I failed to mention but that, that. It but no, pays no, no. off, though, at, in, um, no. in three. Well, See, here's where I disagree, guys. Uh, like, okay, so when I say I, you know, again, like I said in the opening statement, I love all Star Wars. I love Carl, Kylo Ren. I like the Ray. I just felt that the execution was shitty. I just don't like, I just did not like this one. Mass Kanata was like, oh, that's a story for another time. And did we get it? No. Like, bitch, tell me what's well, tell me so, what I want to know. Okay, but but to that, the point you know, before we cut up before we cut off, you're talking about you guys were talking about oh, how yes. she could just Jedi all of a sudden, right? right. Well, that that you get so, the payoff later. Right, you do get the payoff later. But here's the thing, though, like the scene's short, and if you miss it, you miss it. But dude, she wrecks this fucking alien dude, right? 
like when they're on the planet, she was trying to steal BB again. Right. In the town square, she goes around and wrecks him with the, with the fucking. Oh, with her staff. Yeah, with yeah, her yeah, staff, yeah. right? So just from that, okay. So I'm really giving a lot of credit, right? Here's a I let me let me go, let me go back a second, okay? The sequels I like the least out of all of them, right? But I'm trying to explain Ray a little bit in this movie that could have had blossomed into something else. She. She's been a scavenger, and you already know yes. she's a scavenger since a little girl. Right. She knows she, how to fight. She knows how to fight. She knows how to take care of herself, right. and I think that was important. I think a lot of people kind of miss that. Uh, yeah, that was like, awesome. yeah, no, I, agree. I agree with you. That, that, like, she's tough as fuck by the right. time she's, you know, what is she, she 18 had, years old in this movie? Right. 19 yeah, years she old? Had to live she on had to be a scrapper just to survive. Yes. Just, to, just to get a fucking meal. She, right. And she yeah, was yeah, yeah, no, I ain't mad at and that. I, and I think that people overlooked that. So how much of the force was she using before we even saw that? You know, that's the thing. She's a street kid, if you know, yeah. She's a, she's this she's this little thing. I mean, what in real life she's what five something. She's fucking skinny as a rail, but she's been able to survive all this time. Right. I, in my opinion, my head cannon, or this is where I kind of twist what the information is given because I get where you're coming from. But in my head cannon, she's been scrapping for at least ten years, right? Right. And probably using a force to overpower a lot of these bigger fucking scavengers. And not, and not but realizing, is it, but is yeah. ignorant, not realizing, realizing it. But she's ignorant that it is the force, and and then you can interpret that scene going back to what you said, middleman, about. All of a sudden, she did the mind trick. Who's to say she didn't do it before? The way the scene was shot, you could reinterpret that scene as like, I'm going to try to do this again. Because she may have done that before. Because you can look at it. She's never done it before. She should be like, fuck, I got to try to do this and make this count. Like, it could be played di- two different ways in retrospect when looking at it. Because we don't, like Joe said, she's a scrapper. And if you look at, and before we get into Last Jedi, but Last Jedi showed a lot of these kids are forced users, but they're ignorant of what that is. Right. So they they, and, they, and, they, so they, that, they they could do something with the force, and that, not realize and it's that's the force. my point. Going back to Anakin in the in, back in uh, Phantom Menace, because I wanted to see him, especially if he's like the strongest out of all the you know say to have the force. Just a little something. I know it. We showed we we saw it in the pod racing, and we saw it when he was flying the plane. I get it, but I wanted to see him choke motherfuckers out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, here we go again. <laughs> but anyway, it go. Yeah, I, oh, impossible, brother. You guys need to see a movie called Sword of Doom. Um, I can't remember who directed it, but it's an old samurai flick. It's mm-hmm. in from the fifties. Um, Toshiro Mifune is in it. It's called Sword of Doom, and right. it's it's what I thought. Anakin's story was gonna be. However, that that goes back to our prequels discussion. Right. But it's called Sword of Doom, and it's a samurai that's a Ronin, and he just throughout the movie he just becomes more and more corrupt and evil. Right, and, and that's stuff. what I was expecting. And that's that that uh, if you get a chance, see that movie because I think that's how Anakin's story yeah. should have played out. Now, now, now I like that. That's how I feel. Kylo was like I I, I am, in my mind I imagine Kylo being a, a little prick from you know five six seven right. eight till now and. And th- them say, hey, go be with your uncle. He'll, you know, get the prick out of you. You know what I'm saying? And, it, you know, it didn't happen. So I like Kylo. I thought the character was excellent. Um, but I think he was cocky, like Han. Yeah. Um, that's why he uh, was it was like, was able to get his ass whipped by... Um, Remember, Anakin also was cocky, too, though. Right. <clears throat> so you have double the cockiness. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, you know, I, I dug Kylo. So you're so saying he had just, twice the cock then is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I dug, I mean, I dug Kylo. I just, I don't know. It's just, I just, it was just so. All right. So Spawn didn't Disney. like it. Joe and I were good with it. Joe Middle man it. don't like it. Middle man, not feeling it. Mike, what do you think? Uh, when I went and saw it, I went with some friends of mine. And as soon as it ended, I'm like, man, give me back my four, five, and six, right? Wow. That's what I said to my friend. I just looked. So. And that's legit. It's, and that's fair. It grew on me, man. Honestly, it grew on me. Probably because little Mikey, um, you know, he loved it. Right. You know, as a kid, he loved Kylo Ren. He'd put the mask on. We go to Disneyland and go meet him and Vader. So it it grew on me. Um, but now when I look at it, right, when I dissect it now, I mean, I got issues. Director's with, eyes. Well, well, just yeah, but even character wise, I mean, I thought to me Kylo Ren could have been such a badass. Mm-hmm. He could have been just murking fools, you know, but he turned into, or maybe he he, he was a snivelly kind of little well, punk, what I was man. saying about the you know Skywalkers. Right. But here's the thing, though. We don't. We know that his training was incomplete. Okay. And we also know from the last movie, the most recent movie now, we don't know where in his training was he snatched and he was given alive that he's going to have his training completed, but it never happened. So he's somewhere between a Jedi and a Padawan. He can do some cool things because he's powerful. Yeah. But he's not refined. Right. You know what I mean? It was basically like he's a high school dropout, a smart dude, 
Right. But he left, he dropped out of high school. Great point. So he so he's missing really good point. He's missing some educational yeah value. That's, that's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know he was sold on a lie. But we'll get into that on yeah. episode nine though. But I mean, all in all, I, all in all, I'll I'll give it a pass. You know what I mean? Um, the intro to Ray, I enjoyed that. You know when so she was I. scavenging and then she was eating that muffin and she put the yeah. And that was a hard time. That's, that's straight. That's hard times right there. You could you know she has to work for her food for whatever she can get, and that's just. You know, however that muffin came to be, that wasn't that was artificial stuff. It was like, and here's some this, here's some that, and she was living out of yeah. uh, an at at as her home. You mean basically homeless? Oh, start short story. Well, no, her, well, she no, was she, living it. She, she was living it. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. So you know? I enjoyed that aspect of it. I, you know, I, I enjoyed seeing you know Han and, and Chewie step on the scene. But then when they show when they reveal the Falcon, oh that yeah, part that, was dope. Yeah, yeah that was right. Star Wars. Yeah, that was that, that yeah. was cool, man. So it, it had it had a few elements that allows me to give it a pass. Right. Definitely, definitely over eight and nine for me. So you out of the new trilogy, that's your number one. Out of the new one, correct. Okay. So kicking, speaking about eight, let's start off with eight now. I love eight. I'm one of the few people that really enjoy eight. Let's jump in. Um, <laughs> uh, the reason why I just thought it was cool because it was a different, it was different. And I, I, I was fiending for something different. I already saw uh, A New Hope back in, you know, 70s and 80s. I already I didn't need to see it again in 2015, um, so that's why I was just like, uh, so when he, this guy Ryan Johnson brought some new ideas to the table, I was okay with it. Um, the the four skyping, eh, I could deal without. Yeah, that was wick wick. Um, right. The I like the force projection with Luke Skywalker at the end. I thought that was brilliant. The 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 fact that you could see um, his everyone's footsteps in the red. And that whole scene, I thought, was looked really beautiful with the white and the red. And then, then you, when you see Luke stepping on it, there's, on no, the, footprints. You, you, there's no footprints. Which I didn't catch, but right. go ahead. And uh, so I just thought that was genius, a nice little swerve. Um, and, you, you know, it, it, if you're an uncle and you have a, a nephew that is trying to swing on you, you're just going to try. You're not going to fuck him up. You're going to try to, like, move around and not, like, you know. I thought the showdown, to jump in there, right. was very smart. Like, yes. how, like he has to go confront his nephew because right. he failed him, but he's his not going to hurt him. His best friend's son and his sister's Sister. son. I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not. He's going to do, he's going to try to correct what, what, he knew he fucked up somewhere. and He, he couldn't humble him. him by fucking him up. He had to humble him by humbling him. Yes. And, and outsmarting but with him. Lo- but, but with love, I say, I'm not going to hit my own, my own. Right. And that, and that was uh, to me. But he tried to kill his. He tried to kill his own he earlier did, he in the movie, did, right? Over a, a vision, right. you know what I'm saying? He, right. Not even a vision. He saw the darkness in him, and he. That's what brought the shame onto him. That's what. That's what crippled him at his soul, right? Because he's Luke Skywalker, and he almost murked out his nephew because right. of the, what the Jedi is supposed to do and the fear. Right. He felt like he failed himself, and that's why he abandoned everything. Because after you know, even. Not before being a Jedi, he's still a human being. That's his. That's his. That's like if I was to do that to Spawn and and my, and my sister's child. Right? You know what I mean? There's like, I just murked out family. You know how much shame that would bring on? Like right. someone with with huge, with a huge heart. Like Le- like like, that, like you, Leia you would tra- be like, you you, why did you try talking to him? Why did you try? Why did you try? You, you, know? you said here, let me hold on to your son. He can live with me. I'm gonna take care of him, and no one knows I almost killed him. Right. That's shame right there. Right. And you know what? And it, and as the prequel showing, Jedi's going to exile when they feel shamed. Right. Yoda felt shamed for losing to the Emperor. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, okay. And, yeah, that's so where, Yoda that's went into that, exile. And, right. And so Luke felt shame for almost killing Leia and Han's son, only right. child. And, and then so that, he went those are his exile. influences. Those are Luke's influences. So that he he had a father figure in Uncle Owen, which in in hindsight we could do a whole thing about Uncle Owen really being the best father in the whole universe. But uh, but his hindsight, like work uh, mentors or whatever you want to call it or whatever, you're, it was Yoda. And Yoda, when shit got rough, unfortunately, he had to go into hiding. And, I, you know, I get it. Because if not, they're going to kill him. And he has uh, his journey is not supposed right. to end there. It's supposed to end with Luke later on. So, you know, he, he couldn't, he had to go into hiding. I get it. Um, and so Luke kind of did the same thing. And people didn't like that about Luke. And I... I, I I, I thought it was a nice little something new. What was Luke's biggest Achilles heels? His self confidence. Luke can do a lot, but if you look at New Hope and Empire, he had to learn how to get over his self confidence. And Yoda showed him. He goes, he goes, when he goes, we try to raise his X wing. I can't yeah. do it. And Yoda goes, look at my size. Look what I can do. Because yeah. whenever, 
Luke felt that like he couldn't do it. Feel. He would throw a fit and be like, it's just too much. Right. And he le- he overcame that self-confidence issue by returning to the Jedi. He had enough belief in his father and in his himself to overcome that self-confidence. And then went to However, Kylo. That self-confidence that Killy Hills came back again. The shame brought that back. Okay. And, that, 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 and so when people go, that betrayed his character. No. That's now, always I know Joe, been his Joe wants to get in here. So, right? here's the thing. I know Joe okay, wants to get so in here. I'm in there, homie. <laughs> All right. So here, here goes a fat boy talking about food analogies again. Okay. <laughs> so The Last Jedi is like a bowl of pozole. Okay. I and, you got, and you got lemons, pozole, right? And you got lemons. Oh, that's the Listen, greatest. Okay, Wait, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it a roll? No, let, me, let me finish this thought here. Blanco? It's about to make sense, okay? All right, you make me hungry now. Okay, you're all out of limes, right? And you oh, got lemon, yeah. right? And you the squeeze works. the lemon in the pozole, and you don't catch it. And one of those fucking seeds gets in that pozole. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. you're eating, and you're chewing on that hominy, right? And then you bite into that fucking lemon seed. And it fuck. fucks it up. Ah, bitter, blah, blah. It just fucked up a perfect bowl of fucking caldo, right? <laughs> that is what happened in The Last Jedi. So, here, here's what I'm going to say about The Last Jedi. The ill-placed jokes in the first oh, act are uh, what really absolutely. killed that movie absolutely. for me. Yeah. So, the Ma- Yo Mama jokes from Poe yeah. out of the beginning, was yeah. it was ugh, yeah. it was cringy, but it was forgivable yes. because he did the same shit in the previous movie. Yes. Okay? Ridiculous. The, the point that I, that pushed me over Which the line... Which goes back to the dialogue. And- push, pushes me over the line is... When Luke throws the lightsaber over his shoulder, it was so slapstick and fucking stupid right. that it just at that point any of the momentum it had built for me was just like, oh, geez, but I already knew he was going to do that. So I, that, I knew he was no, going to do that so in episode. That's, listen, in, in, listen, in episode no, let me finish. Let me finish. If he had dropped it down to the side mm-hmm. or had thrown it like he threw it, think about this in Return right, of the Jedi. Would have been dope. If if Luke says, "I'm a Jedi like my father," and, it, and threw it that yeah, way, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Would, what? Like yeah. that's the same fucking thing. Throw yeah, it. he should have done and it. Right. It's such a right. small. It's such right. a small thing, You're but right. it means a lot. The, it set the fucking tone. So and I agree with Joe on that. That, that. I fact will agree. How he threw it. Right. How he threw it just killed it because it yeah. was slapstick. It was yeah. like a parody. Right. And then what made it even worse is when Ray's in the tree and she said, well, "You know, who are you? Where are you from?" He's all, "I'm from Jakku," and he's all, "That really is nowhere." It's just like, ugh. Again, that, another ill time comedy. So that's what killed it. Now let me let me take it back a second. Anything Luke Skywalker, Kylo Ren, and uh, Ray related is genius in this movie, in Absolutely. my opinion. That storyline is genius. That it's exactly what you wanted. Again, I'm going to talk about westerns. It's it's like Unforgiven, right? It's William Money has given up the gunslinger life to live on a farm, right? And some supernatural interference comes in that requires him to go back and be a hitman, like the movie. And that that's exactly. What I expected. And the movie ended exactly what I expected. I expected Luke to die. I expected Ray and Kylo to have some sort of connection and disconnect. And I, I had expected, I had expected, the, you know, somehow the, the First Order was going to get fallen. It ended as I expected it to end. It was the details getting there. So, but that, that, Ro, Ro, okay. Rose Tico and Finn. That was horrible. It could have been so much more. Yep. The whole Canto bite scene could have been so great, had they but done it went to element. nowhere. Yep, it went to nowhere. And, and, and the whole Benicio hold on, let me del Toro. Let me finish, let me finish. Exactly, Benicio del Toro does a great fucking character. You got like this, 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 this scoundrel scum that's right. just playing both sides for money, and that ended up going nowhere. Right, right. The whole, the whole Star Destroyer, and the ship just being just out of range. Like you're telling me, you got a whole fucking fleet of Star Destroyers, and you can't fucking triangulate in front of them like you know you you, you know where they're going right, right. <laughs> like you just go in front of them and box them in like that didn't make any sense like that none of that made sense to me that and there was the the tone was set so high that it it it, it was unforgivable like i couldn't suspend you know was it disbelief. suspension of disbelief yeah. it just didn't fucking work so that being said the luke skywalker kylo ren scene is probably the most beautifully shot scene right in all of Star Wars, right. that fucking saber battle. Also, the saber battle with a, Kylo, with Kylo just, and Rey versus the red dudes. That was genius. Yeah. What, what else is fucking great? Luke's training of Rey, fucking genius. Very poetic. Yoda's cameo was perfection. See, that scene alone is probably the best scene in all of Star Wars, in right. my opinion. Yoda's Yoda's cameo. When Yoda shows up at the Force Ghost to, yep. to tell Luke, you're still doing the same shit you were doing before. Like, exactly. Like, this is... That was that was genius. 
Everything else in that movie was just it just fell apart. It fell apart. Well, there's a scene that I really enjoyed is uh, the Holdo uh, sacrifice, the suicide scene. The, yeah, the I thought that was very. Move. I thought that was very strong, and I've always wanted wanted to know why they that was never ever done. And I, I dug. well because it's a kamikaze. You die. For, you, she died. You right, know what I mean? right, she, right, she, right, right. But I dug it, that. It should have been Leia. That's what I was saying. It should have been Leia. Yeah. That did that. But, but you know though, okay, we'll get into Rise. I want to come swing around to that to that to that. Um, what did you think, Vito? I was angry at that movie for the first half until until the Yoda Luke Skywalker scene. Then it clicked, and I started to love it. Um, the Rose Tico and you know Joe brought up a good point how I felt about the whole scene with Rose and Finn doing what they had to do and it went nowhere I think the whole point of that movie much like Empires was things were failing in the Empires nothing was going right for them in Last Jedi it showed bad decision making on everybody Kylo made bad decisions that right. cost him Rose and Finn almost died due to their bad decisions because they were impulsive oh we have to do this and they didn't know what they were doing right. and almost died Poe Dameron's Brad decision making cost him to lose over half the fleet because of his recklessness, right. and that's what Leia was showing. And the whole and you know again, Kylo, he lost his uncle, he lost his last connection to his father. Like the fact that he killed his father finally hit him at that point. And when Ray turned her her back to him, he realized he was by himself. The whole movie was about a series of bad decisions that I don't think a lot of people give enough credit to, and that was the whole point. Was but it was executed poorly. Actually, I. And that's subjective, and I won't argue with that. I will, anyone who feels who don't like it, I will never argue because that's I could see why. But right, for me, because I hate the kettle bite thing, and I, I I'm don't okay. Have a pro- my only problem I, I, with that ke- with the whole when he went and that Benicio plan, was a waste again. I, I like, like Benicio Terrence Stamp earlier. They wasted. I, I like Benicio's character. Actor. No, his uh, character was awesome because he showed, you know, well we trusted you. Well, you trusted the wrong person. It was a life learning experience. Guess what? You didn't hire the guy you were supposed to hire. You hired some other dude that you knew nothing about, and this is what you get. You almost got killed because you filled it and you fucked the plan. You were supposed to go for this dude, not this guy. You settled for somebody, and you almost cost you your life. The whole, you know, that's a great point. It was a life learning experience. Um, from and for me, I thought that was brilliant. But, but that's but, but as, it's subjective, but, though. But why bring Benicio in if there's no payoff? Who, but who cares? No but payoff, but who cares though? It was still it was still a great acting moment. I'm not gonna worry about the decision why he was brought him. I liked his performance, and that's all I needed. Now my now this is a waste of a good actor. Though. I and then well he a only had a, plot. he, he had a, a small, waste of plot. Now that being said. My only really grievances about this movie was I thought it could have been more exotic. The locales could have been more exotic. I thought I liked the 1920 look, but it was too 1920s. Why couldn't you spice it up with more something more exotic? Exotic I've never seen before. It like it's, more, a, it's a sci-fi uh, it movie. It was it was it was very that it was kind of like uh, it was very prequel feeling. Uh, not even prequel feeling. It was you know, very it felt prequel like, feeling. It, it, that Kenobi shit. Agree, it felt like an old school. It's exactly prequel feeling. It, it yeah. felt like an old school Battlestar Galactica episode from 1978 <laughs> when they did when, when they did something when they weren't doing doing with the Cylons. To me, it would have been better had you been more aliens, not dressed so human. It's a sci-fi movie. Sci-fi movie. Give me some more imagination with your production design. Make it more exotic. Make it more memorable. You know, yeah. other than that, like I said, I'm good with the film nitpicking aside but i won't argue with anyone who doesn't like the last jedi because i can see the reasons why they right. don't so can i what about you Mike? Yeah. well i will Sorry. say uh you know and i've said this before about movies i don't like i'm no way talking about the filmmakers or the actors i'm just telling you my response to what i was given right so yeah. um episode eight to me was probably the worst out of the nine that we're talking about wow. for me and maybe it's down there with um phantom, phantom. You know, so one of, yeah, yeah, probably Phantom. Anyway, so I'm in the theater watching eight, and we talked about this earlier. Yeah, yeah. And when Leia does her Mary, Mary Poppins. Poppins bullshit, I like, right? I like that scene. I'm, I'm seriously looking around, like literally, like just trying to see if I'm the only one bugging out. Like, <laughs> wow, all right, cool. And then that Canto bite shit, 45 uh, minutes of a casino yeah, yeah, bullshit, yeah. right? I I couldn't get into. Uh, I, I thought that it. it I guess it was necessary to the plot, but I thought that's a big chunk of movie there, man. Right. That you probably could have condensed a lot. Um, I agree with you that, that they could have tied some things up on that to move it faster. I will agree. The misplaced humor, like when uh, Poe was talking to dude, like he's on hold. Oh, I'm on hold. I was yeah. Like what? Like, what, what space phones? What's going is on? Is there space phones? So- that's, so, a, that's a, that's I, a Marvel I, the, the minute, studio influence right there. So the minute I saw that, I looked at Ezekiel and said, what, does George Lucas have better humor? I'm like, well, 
And then I started thinking about the prequels. I was like, well, I guess not. But still, at the same time, it, that same writing, it felt like in Episode 7. The same way you feel about that is how I feel when okay. he's like... But also stay you know, true to Poe Dameron's character, though. That's something that Poe Dameron would well, do. They re- That's why I said I, it was forgi- it was for- uh, to me it was forgivable at that point. And then when Luke yeah. does this brush his shoulders off shit, that's some pop culture like nowadays or yep. 90s, late yeah. 90s. I, and I, it just totally took me away from the scene. Now, let me ask you this, and, nothing, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but sure. did you feel that was more Mark Hamill than Luke Skywalker? And those, those little details like that when Joe was saying you threw the lightsaber over his head or when he's brushing dust off his shoulder. Yeah. Was that... And for me, I felt that was more Mark Hamill than Luke Skywalker. If that makes any yeah, sense. it wasn't Skywalker. So yeah, I agree. It was it was Hamill or whoever. Because Hamill does have that type of sense of humor, right? And it, he played to that. And I and again, that's just me nitpicking. But like I said, I, even when I watch the movie, I still feel ha- that's Hamill, not Skywalker. Yeah, and and what else uh, that I had problems with? You know, and where where the hell does this Laura Dern character come from? And, and, right. She's supposed to ride out like that and, right. and not Admiral Akbar, you know. Right, I mean, right. that could have been yeah, easily you, Admiral Akbar. Could you imagine the backlash though? I mean, people hate on it now, but if a dude named Akbar did a suicide run, <laughs> you know, this people would be age, like, "This is a hero." Yeah, that's that's this fair. Oh, come on, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's fair. Looking at it like that, I didn't think about that, but that would have been dope though. Like. That would have been dope if Admiral Akbar was the one. It that, should have been Akbar. If it yeah. wasn't Akbar, it should have been. Or, or the other guy, or the, but, the, the, the but one that was Ak- uh, Lando's uh, co pilot. Yes. No, but didn't Akbar get murked out in Last Jedi anyway? Wasn't yeah, his, yeah, yeah, his yeah, ship yeah. was gunned yeah. down? Yeah, he, he, no, was, he, he, he was killed, killed when, when Leia uh, was Leia, in yeah. Mary Poppins. See, I like that scene because it showed her force power finally. Right. So we finally got a taste because we didn't get nothing from Leia in 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 in, in any um, of them. No, but no. Uh, what's the last one? Uh, force, force Awakens. Awakens. We got nothing. Well, from there was Leia. nothing. For, Just no, bad. What, what did you want to raise surgery? a lightsaber in front of like the? No, rebels? but anything. We didn't get anything from her. We didn't get. We got a half hug. Like he didn't even want to look at her when he hugged her. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, all right, bitch, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know that we didn't get nothing from Princess Leia. She she gave nothing in, in, in Force Awakens. Yeah, so this way, it did a little something. showed a little bit of the Force, you know. There's some new Force shit, too. That's another thing. I don't like all the new... It's like they rely on that. Like, sometimes I'm like, I've never seen this happen before. Like, I've never seen a Jedi do this before. All of a sudden, there's some new... Right. Okay. And we, I'll wait till you... Yeah. Okay, okay, because speak on that, and you brought up a good point. We're about However, to get to that right However, Ryan now. Johnson did say this, though. In the original trilogy, he goes, we, at least every movie showed something new that the Jedi could do, and he wanted to keep up with that tradition. And so... I, and I like the Force... Uh, and the whole... Maybe, Projection Mary, thing and should no, have been just it. One and the, thing. But the, he said the Mary I Poppins like thing mm-hmm. was actually before like Disney bought Lucasfilm. That was canon. There's a book that explained Jedi powers, and that was authorized by Lucasfilm. And we all know that if it was authorized by Lucasfilm, that's considered canon, even though if it wasn't in the movie. Again, this was pre Disney, but Lucasfilm was very. Yeah, tight on I'm not stuff. saying they took Mary Poppins. That just would have remind me. Yeah, oh, yeah. Me, oh, uh, oh, no, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I don't what even. What did you think about the Force skyping? I'm good with I that. thought that was whack. Um, I didn't like any of that. Really? I thought they, I, I thought they, maybe made it a little better in nine because they actually grabbed objects. But I thought the the four skyping to me was not cool. Another thing, but, um, the porgs. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. But but so here's the thing: is a lot of people do say that they hate the four skyping thing, but. Luke and Vader do it at the end of Empire. Yes, they're, they're not skyping. They no, don't see they each are. Other. They're just talking. To, but we don't. We don't know that. Yeah, but watch, watch it again. They're, they're not physically. Watch it, I mean, they don't see each other. Right. No, we don't know that. Well, that's you arguable. Know okay. That's fair. Yo, Luke, they expanded. They expanded. And what I'm saying is, is that it was expanded. So right? you the power. That, okay. So power like, looks like it was expanded. Okay. Just like, just like. In, okay. When we get to when we get to nine, just like. When Kylo and them are force skyping, uh, right, and he looks at his hand, and his hand has water on it, right, right. That's kind of is a hint for in the next movie when he, when we get there, what right, we'll talk the about it. But I'm I'm just saying is that to me it feels like you get a taste of those powers right. in the previous installments, and then slowly they come to, they, to they the, morph into something bigger. Right. They, they okay. They, they, they All they right. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. That, could, was, exactly. Was, and that that's and valid. Like, oh, that's the hard part. Yeah. Right. Yeah, rules. That yeah. rules. Everything's gotta have rules. That's well, we fair. We didn't then. have the rules in the original trilogy. Uh, we just learned as we went, and that's right. kind of. I mean, if you look at this, the way the movies are structured, the movies are structured. Like, take take some of your favorite bands or whatever. There, there, there is a certain. There's, there's, there's a certain way it's calculated how they go about doing things. You know what I mean? It's like punk music. Punk music is only three chords. 
the Star Wars films are designed very similar in that way. In terms of the, in terms of the Skywalker storyline, I'm not talking about Solo. I'm not talking about Rogue One. But in terms of how they try to do the Skywalker storyline, they're trying to follow the template that George uh, solidified with the prequels. The prequels have a certain rhyme and reason that match up to the original trilogy. Now these the new directors and writers had to try to mimic that. You know what I mean? You they don't want you can't be too too different because then you're just not being Star Wars, and that's a hard I mean, that's, that's a hard people li- don't like Ryan Johnson for is that they felt he went too different. I don't think don't he like did. It? I don't think he no. went too different. I I don't like the ill placed humor. And wasted plot points. But then why did you like the the ill placed humor in in uh, Force Awakens? Because the only ill placed humor I thought in that movie is the very first line when Poe says, Do you talk first? Do I talk first? Do you talk first? Right. And that's why when I I first saw the movie, Finn, I was okay with. When he's like, you know, Phasma, I didn't, well, I'm in charge, Phasma. Who's in charge? I'm in fire. I, that, you, that, I didn't mind that. Yeah, neither did I. I didn't mind that at all. I thought that was I hate fine. That shit. So, you had, Joe, you got a good point about the Force, the Force guy being an empire. I didn't think about that. Maybe. It was Again. just cooler when they did it. It's like I was talking about religions. I, I'm connecting dots that may not be there, right? It's or, just in my head, can kind of make it. And if you he's look at exactly it like this, right. it wasn't explained well. Or if you look at it like this, okay, so that was the 70s and 80s. Right. So they were on the phone, uh, force on the phone, and then this is the new <laughs> no, millennium, no. and they're force skyping. No, you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. no? no. Okay. They went from landline <laughs> to broadband. It was a force landline <laughs> to a force Skype. So I got this right. It was Chewbacca eating a porg? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. and then he, he was, was chilling, to. and then he was chilling with Porgs as well. And right. I got he, was, he was about to, and then the little they were on the like, Falcon with him, right? Yeah, because right. he felt bad because the Lord was like, "Oh, you're eating my lover." He's like, "Fuck, I can't even enjoy my meal." So he let him come his on mom. board. Well, it could have been. We don't know. <laughs> we, to, we, be, to be fair, I would do that in real life with pork and having a little piglet hanging out. Like I'd be perfectly yeah. okay with it. And feed him a piece of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I was Hello, talking about Chewbacca. food. And I'm fucking hungry, dude. <laughs> and then the stupid uh, those maids that were on a. Uh, Luke's Island. I was cool oh, with that. With the good. maid outfits. Yeah. And, and oh, yeah, that's. A good I, point. I just. Uh, I, agree. Dude, I, was, I, I didn't think about that to write this. I, I, I was cool with that. I didn't. I didn't think too. De- okay, and I know what you're talking about. And I saw that. No, like I space tuxedos it. too. Yeah. Like, that was like I saw that. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. I didn't see them as as maids. I saw them as like nuns. Uh, to be honest, for me, I interpreted it as nuns, not not maids. There you go again with your. So, <laughs> but so I, I was okay yeah. with that. I was good with that. To me, like you said. The four, um, being a Jedi is like a religion, and I just saw them as nuns. I didn't see them as, as maids, but they were nuns who are keeping up the sacred place. Right. No more, no less. So space tuxedos in the casino, right? Yeah. So let, was, let's uh, go back. To, let's go back to Naboo, okay? Right. In Naboo, all those people, those administrators for the queen, right? Right. All, all, right okay. Right. Thank they you. were all dressed formally, right? Yes. Yeah. And those are all formal wear. Yes. But they didn't look like tuxedos. They yes. didn't look like a business suit. They didn't look like then some you go, James Bond yeah, shit. You go to Canto Bay and a guy's wearing a double pressed, you know, yeah, yeah. regular oh. men's cut suit. Like, uh, it, what? And it goes along with the, with those 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 nuns, right? In a in a in a in a maid outfit, like you know, this is yep. Downton Abbey. Like, no, like. <laughs> It's too. It wasn't. And it kind of goes back to your point. Like, it wasn't imaginative enough. Like, yeah, it, it, it was, looked like the Roaring Twenties in that was, scene. And still I, calling back too much. Yeah. Where, it to me. You guys are changing it, it's, my, it's, 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 my outlook on no, episode. No, 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 the movie. The this movie is nitpicking. Oh, I am nitpicking right now. <laughs> I just expect this. If you're gonna do a sci-fi fantasy, I expect some imagination. Absolutely. And, and you that's know what, what we got. Ryan, from- and, and here's the thing, they had the greatest arsenal. And what people don't seem to understand, Lucas's DNA is in all three sequels. His I, his ideas were taken apart and used where it made sense or was convenient for Disney. Exactly. Maybe the storyline of the Wills was not used, but everything he had pre-production, if you look at the making of the books, everything he had in pre-production found their not not everything, but a lot of stuff found their way into the sequels and were used. Even Ryan Johnson right. admitted that the Last Jedi was the closest thing to what Lucas had in mind for one of the sequels, anyway. So a lot of his DNA was repurposed in there. So, but that it, was the legit. first time that I felt like I missed George Lucas after Last Jedi. Like I, I don't know. I just felt that his presence wasn't there. It just felt like yeah, a agree. different franchise after Last Jedi. Even though I liked Last Jedi, it just felt like I, I like that at that time. I was like, what the fuck am I watching? Like even though I liked it, I was still like, you know. And so that's why. Solo had to bring me back to that love. Solo brought me back into the love of Star Wars and then the Mandalorian and then this one. So uh, the Rise of the Skywalker, to me, I loved it. Um, it it was very big in terms of the everything. It was just very, very big. And uh, 
I, I dug the fact that she was a Palpatine. And uh, c- can you tell him who called that um, back in 2015? This guy called it back when yeah, Force right. Awakens yes. came out. Yeah, I he said, did. I said the way she fights, he did. it looks like uh, she's Emperor Palpatine in the stabbing motion. Even her bow, her bow and, and staff, the end tips, look like Sidious's lightsabers. Right. Are we, oh, what are we talking about? When she fought in 7 when, then? When she fought, yeah, when she seven, fought in 7 initially. So, you, she, so you're, she saying that was, you're saying it was planned? Like, I don't know. Route, okay. That was my thing. I said, I, I said, I said she's a Palpatine. That, she's a clone. He called it way, way back. back. That first conversation after I watched it and he watched it, I'm like, you watched it? Okay, I'm calling you right now. And then we talked about it for like an hour or two hours on the phone. And I said, yo, she's a Palpatine. And I called that shit back in 15. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. And then so I either that or she's like plague. It. I was like, but I was on that that Palpatine bus, you know what I'm saying? And I was, I, I just knew that she was a Palpatine. I was completely against the idea the whole time. Right. Like, no, no way. No and way. so when they brought him back, I was happy. I love the character. I love uh, Ian uh, McDermott. I think he's yeah. a brilliant actor. He makes everything better. Uh, the Emperor makes everything better. I, I really I was happy to see him back. I just wish they didn't say it in the opening crawl. Oh, the dead speak. I thought that was fucking I did think corny. That, I, I, I'm gonna I would have liked that. it. I thought that was a little lazy myself, too. I, yeah, I would have liked it better if the, there's a disturbance in the dark side of the force. Kyla goes to see what's really good in it the hood, and then he goes, oh, shit, it's, the, it's Palpatine. That would have had more oomph. It could have been more eloquently put, I feel. like That it was kinda, just it felt a little it, yeah, bullshit. It you know felt a little lazy. I will admit, it felt a little lazy. Um, like, a little B-movie-ish, if you will. Right. And then so then... Um, Kylo putting back the helmet, getting the band back together, finally seeing the Knights of Ren. I dug that. I, I dug the fact that we got to see uh, Ray with Chewie, with Poe, um, all, all the new and the old. I thought it was a nice, it was the perfect blend. A lot blend. of callbacks to Return of the Jedi. Right. It was a, But it was a perfect blend of the new and the old characters. And I agree. To the point where now I like Foe, I mean Foe. I like Poe too. Foe. I'm hungry. I'm, I'm hungry. Why do you keep bringing up fucking food? <laughs> I like Finn and Poe. I put them together, Foe. But anyway, um, so I like <laughs> I like both of those characters now. When I didn't like them in Episode Seven and Eight, um, they, I think they really came into their own. I thought the writing was better. I think Agreed. I think Finn is the best screamer in all of Star Wars. Ray, and he's, he's no. Oh, he just screams. I like Finn. No, I, I'm not dogging him. I'm, I'm giving him props. And then John so, Boyega is a great actor. Oh, by the have way. you ever seen Attack the Block? Not yet. Watch Attack the Block. He was amazing in Attack the Block. You'll love Attack the Block, dude. I'm telling you, Attack the Block is a sci-fi movie and it's a hood movie wrapped up in one. It's dope. Anyway, um, uh, so I thought I dug that por- portion of it. Um, just. <sighs> The Leia thing, it kind of just, I, I wish I would have, we would have been able to see what Leia was really supposed to do. For what I don't understand, she was supposed to have a lightsaber duel. I, I kind of salivated that. I think that would have been pretty awesome. But, but like still, that. though, with how, with her storyline from The Last of the Jedi, I thought this wrapped up pretty good, though, with how, yeah, no, it wrapped speaking, up good. It made, and made I, better they, sense. They, like you said, you know, when the chips are down and they had to stick the landing, they did that with the Princess Leia's story arc. Like, I, I actually feel. thought she actually tied all three movies together. I, like, I was, People don't. I don't think people are giving J.J. Abrams she enough she credit seven. to utilize old footage that weren't is included. Well, that in, worked. In the like you said, they had to stuck, stick no, the no, landing, like you were talking about it, earlier with I Rogue it, and. Solo. Oh no doubt, but I thought it was dope. These, these deleted scenes weren't even in the Blu-ray, right? Right. And that was smart. Like by Quinn's, like I got this. He worked it into where it was cohesive, and it was like, because I don't think without her being in it, it would have tied as well. Oh, of course. I need you needed her presence in there, and it, and it of worked. Course. Of course, so. now, and it wasn't entirely relied on archive footage because it was a mixture of archive footage and stand-ins. They and CGI. They had to right. manipulate it, but he made it work. And you know what? God bless him. That's a. Gr- I don't. I hope he gets credit for it at some point for pulling off the damn near impossible yeah. and making that work and showing much respect to Carrie Fisher and did her character justice. Right, and I think it did do justice, in my opinion. And then so then, um, let me see. I'm just trying to, um. Seeing Luke one last time and saying that's not how you treat you tr- you treat a lightsaber with more respect, which reinforces which what was he like learned a little punch from the boss to uh, Ryan Johnson. Oh right, yeah. You know, which I, I didn't, done. No, I didn't right. take it that way because I totally he, took it that way. No, I took that shit. As he that. redeemed himself at the end of the Last Jedi, which Ryan wrote. Right. He just only emphasized, "Hey, look, learn from my mistake." It took him like he right. redeemed you, you himself. You talk storyline, but I'm talking like studio wise. That was like. I you know don't think I wise. disagree. I disagree. But Double entendre. what do you think? So, oh, sorry, homie. Yeah, that's all good. So, I, I liked it a lot. Okay, I liked it it's, with all the other Star Wars movies. I didn't love it as much I as I thought it, I was gonna bro. love it, but I liked it a lot. And I think 
you know, now that we're talking about it, it probably is my favorite out of the sequels. Oh, absolutely. But that being said, there's so many flaws. There's so many flaws. Like what? Like what? Like, like what, what, okay, what? so the whole Leia, there was too much, what's the word, exposition? In, in the film, way too much. Way too much. There needed a, This needed to be two different films, really. Uh, it, 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 they, so the whole Leia, the Leia being trained as a Jedi thing. So uh, you've never once heard about that. Did they do that movie. in extended universe? Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, but the EU doesn't matter. No, I know that, but no, they took. But, they've taken a lot from the EU. So yeah. Bro. Go, yeah, they take it from the EU, but that 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 would. It was never explained. It's it's going back to what his thing. It was never really fully explained right. Right now, if it had said back in back when Luke was talking to Ray in Last Jedi that yeah, I trained my sister. Like right. that, to set the oh by the way that, about, yeah it would have it would have been a little bit but this all of a sudden she was training you know they're going doing these flashback scenes to explain right to bring in her lightsaber for right. this movie and I don't Which like I flashback was, scenes in Star what Wars what is though. with her like she has a lightsaber now but that was like, always kind of implied though I mean you're right when the, the, the extended specifically universe, when was okay, it implied uh, I would say this okay let me let me rephrase that you're right the extended universe is no longer canon but certain things in the sequels. Happened in the EU where we have, as fans, had certain expectations. Like, I've always expected Leia to be Jedi, uh, trained like a Jedi. Uh-huh. Even though it wasn't explained in the movies, I always had that expect expectations because of the EU. And they, didn't, they did deviate from the EU, but they also incorporated a lot of things from it as well, too. What, so, I'm, say, what I'm saying is if, if if it was touched on in any of the previous movies, they wouldn't have had to have that flashback scene with right. the deep face. Ag- agreed, agreed. That whole scene was well, to explain but the, that. the Mary Poppins scenes that everyone shits on was her show. That's fine. But story-wise... But That's story, fine. She but, got strength in the Force, but all of a sudden now she has a lightsaber? But story-wise... she had a lightsaber and right. Luke was keeping it with him the whole time. Okay. Right, you know, right, right, right. He gave up the Jedi Order and the Jedi religion, but he kept her lightsaber. But here's the thing, though. It smelled like potpourri. That's why. <laughs> story-wise, though, it didn't, need to, it didn't have to be explained she was changed as a Jedi because if you look at the way the stories flowed, it would be kind of like out of nowhere. Oh, by the way, I changed Leia as a Jedi. But which, that goes to my uh, episode to the seven. They didn't do shit with Leia. It goes back to in episode okay, seven. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll Thank give you that. You. Okay. But yeah, well, so, okay, so let me, okay, let me keep going on. Okay, so... I'm okay with them bringing Palpatine back. I just wish that Palpatine had had some Greater. seeds planted in the previous movies yeah. a little bit more. Mm. Like, I get it's supposed to be a big reveal, and whether it was planned or not, whatever. But, like, there needed to be a hint dropped somewhere. Well, previously. they did. They did. When Plagueis, in Episode 7, when Plagueis is talking for the first time, you hear the same music of when Luke and um, and Palpatine okay, I'll are give you in that. the thing. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah, the music is the Come same. On, I do this shit. The this music, is, the music is the same. But it wasn't explicit enough. For, it wasn't explained enough. Right. Because what... I, I'm conceding that because I'm doing what I was telling with this guy. I, I'm... I'm I'm tying strings together that weren't necessarily tied right, together, right, right. but in my head canon in order to right. reconcile things, right? So I, that that I that I, okay, I, I I see your point there. So what I loved was the Sith cult. Like I want to know how many more motherfuckers out there in the Absolutely. universe worship the Sith and right. are wearing these black robes that are you know in fucking the stadium. So okay, so what I got from the Sith cult, I thought they were just um, spirits or spooks or no. whatever. You know what I'm saying? No, they're flesh and blood. Okay. So it's like the cult, like, you know, Lor Santica in Force Awakens, the old man who says, look at how old you've become. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So he's from the Church of the Force. This is all shit in the books, in the right. comic books, right? The Latter-day Saints? The, yeah, the latter Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly what it is. So Space Mormons? It, that shit's all. So I want to know about the Sith cult. So I loved, I loved the horror aspect Absolutely. of Palpatine and the Sith cult. Absolutely. Like, I fucking the dug it. The Frankenstein shit. The Frankenstein shit. Thank the you. The techno with the magic. I totally dug it. Yep. Um, the lightsaber battles were fucking great. Yep. I mean, is that, that water ocean and the death mm, That was, that, that was, that was supposed to contrast scene. well with the Obi-Wan Anakin battle from Sith. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, exactly. You're because in so water, the lava water rep- and fire. Yeah, totally. The, so the, 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 the lava represented death. The water represents life. So the the lightsaber, the lights, the, the what would you even call that shit? Fucking the teleportation of objects. But at the same time, like I feel like fifty percent of the movie was trying to explain the next coming plot point, right? It was like it, there, there, there should, there, it should. But isn't that typical should. of of Lucas though? Like when if no, Lucas, Lucas, no, you didn't think no, that not Lucas. Lucas. no, not at all. There's never been a flashback used 
before the right. sequels, right? I don't like flashbacks in my Star and, Wars. And there's too much exposition. There's way too fucking much of it. And that's my, my big gripes with, with this movie. And the pacing was off and it had to be because it was like, so shit that I popped at when fucking Ray stops the shuttle. That was that fucking had I was like, whoa, fuck. Like, you know, like, holy shit. Like, that was dope. That was you know? dope. And, but then the things that I went like, mm, she's like, oh, Palpatine's your grand, your grandpa. Like, huh? Like, who was who was Palpatine smashing during the right? Fight? Exactly. Well, he's a politician. He was <laughs> the ball chick. No, no, he, he was, was smashing the, the, the ball chick. First of all, him. So, S- Sith have no scruples, and he was a politician, so you know he was banging. Quite I know he did, and, but and, you know what? and not only that, he probably just like he didn't even take his pants down. He just probably nutted through, and then. <laughs> Force came or something, you know what I mean? Uh, what, whatever, like so. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Here you go. Imagine, Congra- hey, imagine you be- it. Congratulations. You know, hey, wait, 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 wait. It's a girl. Wait, imagine the girl who got finger popped by him during like <laughs> with the dark electricity. <laughs> oh. Now are you saying that like plague is seen in seven? You you referred to right with the music cue? Yeah. Are you saying that they had it all planned the whole time? No. Or you uh, think it was just? I think Maybe, I, well, may have had some I was hoping yeah, that so. that was Darth Plagueis the Wise. I was hoping Snook, because you know how they always have the different names. Yeah. So Palpatine was Darth Sidious, right. et cetera, et cetera, right? So I was hoping that Snoke, I had higher expectations for Snoke, which is another thing with episode seven. Oh, um, yeah. But I was hoping he was Darth Plagueis the Wise, because why would they bring him in, talk about him, and then nothing? So I was kind of hoping that's what it was, and that's why I heard the music. I was like, oh, shit, that's Plagueis. And see, I'm glad... It- it wasn't. In fact, I'm going to jump into my my take on it. On nine? On nine. Um, okay. But let me ask you guys this. Am I the only one who only noticed that they copied and pasted the basic plot line from Endgame to Rise of Skywalker? The good yes, guys are, are looking for an, ad of, an an artifact to defeat Thanos, which would be the Emperor. I'm just... I So I watched it twice. I was like, oh, shit. I'm watching Endgame. Yep. Sans a time travel course. But that being said... I agree. Yep. I, I I fucking love it. I I thought. But, I, no no no. I, you forgot, you've got the, the the other point you had about that. What was the other point? Uh, about how at the end everyone shows up, just like oh at, yes, at, and at the end everybody shows up. And you know I was waiting for fucking you know fucking be like on your left Ray and <laughs> show up with everybody. <laughs> Hello Chewbacca. <laughs> hey Lando did actually, <laughs> but you know um I love the heart of it. I thought emotionally it had a lot of love in that movie. Going back to what Joe said about the fight scene on on, on one of the moons of Endor, you know, um, where the battle, where one of the pieces of the Death Star fell, did anyone see the symmetry? How both the grandfather and the grandson lost that fight, except for Anakin became Vader and lost his soul. His grandson was able to save his soul. Right. Ray took mercy and healed him, and that was with the help of Leia. Leia gave her last bit to the both of them. Because Ren stopped, mm-hmm. and so did, and so did Ray, and they both realized what was going on. On and to do a a a, lot, a force heal, you have to give some of your life, and Ray gave Ren some of her life. Um, and See, I did. The, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, that. So that was another thing that kind of made me cringe a little bit. There was a little bit too much of this life hot potato thing happening, right? Like. Right. I'm going to give my life to Palpatine. Palpatine. I'm going to take it back and give some right. to, well, to the Kylo whole... and then take some from Kylo and then give yeah. it back. It was like hot potato with life. And yeah. it was just like... But the whole movie was about Ooh, life. It's a little lazy. If the, if, re, if, if the Revenge of the Sith was about the losing of your soul, this is about your second chance at life. Um, and here's and then people, we talk about explanations, right? So she kept all the books that she took from Skywalker. She learned quite a bit on her, on that, her okay. own lo- that I'll reading. Agree with. That and, I'll you agree know, with. And, and Leia was probably there to help her with that. It wasn't like she did this on her own. Leia was there to help guide her with this. And it takes a lot to give, I'm going to live a lesser life to heal, to heal you. Um, that being said, I thought for what it was, it, it, it J.J. Abrams made the landing. Abrams. I, Abrams. I love the love in the film. I love. I love. It was just a good film. It felt like Star Wars. Right. Um, it felt like Star Wars to me. Spawn brought up a good point. You missed the presence of George Lucas. However, isn't it funny though? This movie is about the children of the Skywalkers, right? Ray and Kylo. Well, who's the children of, of George Lucas? J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson. Everybody who does these big movies, but that were fan that grew up like us watching Star Wars in the eighties, are now making movies. So isn't it only right for the children or the inspirations that George Lucas gave to make the sequels that included the offspring, the grandchildren? Right. So I see all that. So while even though Lucas's presence might have been 
missed. It was still Star Wars because it's about the children now. It's about us doing it, right. carrying the torch. And I thought it all makes sense. And um, here's the thing, um, too, before you hop in mm-hmm. there, JJ, I mean, I've heard... Jar Jar. Well, <laughs> I've heard the rumors of what Episode Nine should have been. And you know what? I'm glad they went this way because, you know, the leak wall, the script wall, interesting... I felt this one tied it up better. It made sense why the Force Order existed. It made it gave reason why Snoke <clears throat> was disposable and why he existed. You that's a hard thing to do to kind of like okay, well you killed Snoke, which is the main bad guy. It gives him credence. Like he was meant to be disposable because he was never really a true being. He was the eyes and ears in a for Pal, for Palpatine to set up his return. A, a puppet literally. Yeah, literally literally a puppet. And I was good with that because no one controls the Empire but the Emperor himself. Right. How's this First Order going to be? Where are they going to get the resources for that? Well, we all know that, that the Emperor had contingency plans for everything. He took nothing likely except for that, Vader. Right, but that's the with the comics and all that oh, stuff. No, no, but, no, no you doubt. You they conveyed that in the... But, in the, but again, again, okay, you're right. You're right. But still, though, I think they nailed it. And if you didn't have the Emperor in it, it wouldn't have tied in so well because it's like... If you watch The Mandalorian, the Empire is falling apart with different fractions. Right. Only the Emperor and the legions that revived him could have had this going. And he said, too, the First Order was the first to go out, and then the Final Order would have been his official return. I would would say one more thing that I liked, and then I'm going to see what... uh, What I liked real quick was the fact that Kylo, I want to be a better, uh, you know... uh, I want to be a better warrior than you, or he wanted to be better than Vader. That no, was his, he was corrupted because he. No, cause, no, but cause... hold on, let me finish. And then, so he wanted to be better than Vader. Remember, he was talking to the helmet initially, you know, stronger and yada yada yada. So, in actuality, he was able to do something that his grandfather didn't, which was save the woman he loved. Yes. At the end, and so he ended up saving Rey at the end, which is something that drove Vader to the darkness. Is what brought Kylo back to the light. But that's what he didn't point. say was You know what I'm saying? And but, then and then so that's the only time he smiled in the whole front in the in, from seven to eight, you never see him smile. And then when they kissed, you know, he he smiled. One he had that, that yeah, smile he, and then he died. And here's the thing so, too. You know, he died happy. You know what I'm saying? He died so, happy and when they talk about Anakin trying to save Padme, what um Palpatine didn't tell him was it's gonna require your life. A life for a life. That's how you can save him. And yeah. Ben gave his life to her. Ben, I think Ben always liked her because he didn't. She made him feel not alone. That's why he liked her. He wasn't alone, and I think he did like her. And he didn't like his dad. Like his dad likes a strong woman and was in pursuit of her, and he gave his life for her because he loved her. Right. That's and, and she, that's how Padme died. Yeah, and and, and it's funny. Yeah. Like Padme, I think Ray likes the bad guys too yeah. because she saw goodness in him. I think Padme gave up her life to save Anakin. Yeah. Really. That's what I think. And my head cannon again. <laughs> Drawing strings, I think that somehow the Emperor Vader, subconsciously or unconsciously, the reason Padme died was to give Anakin life. Yeah, that's a great point. I never thought about that today. Good head cannon. What do you, What do you think before we wrap it up? Well, uh, I mean, to me, nine. I was just happy to get through it, man. <laughs> oh, that's, that's I, I, wow. I, I mean, I was just happy to get through it. I mean, speaking on J.J. Abrams, I think he Jar-Jar. did. Jar Jar. He, he he did. Um, I think the best he could with what was handed to him, and he cleaned up a lot of things to a lot of people. But um, for me, once just just the bleed off from eight for me was just nine was just an extension of of all that. And like I said, it, you guys covered most of it. I, I mean, I had issues. You know, the the helmet being red, I thought it was cool, but I, I think it would have been cooler if we didn't see him make it. I thought. Um, the Knights of Ren thing was, was was cool, but then again, you know, when you jump back into some of the humor, like you know, with some of the stuff that Poe does, man, like mm-hmm. it just ta- it just separates me from it, man. Right. You know, I, I but go you know, back there's to always seven. been that humor, going back though. to seven. But even but but here's the, here's the thing: there's always been humor in Star Wars films, though. They've you know, even with the Empire, good the darkest humor, one. Well, that's always subjective. I mean, it's not like full on comedy, but that. There's always been that humor. You can look at Transformers to any big the, the or, or cartoon any or the movie because no, the, the movies the, oh, no, 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 the movies like they use that template of just a yeah. little bit of. I mean, they're obviously not comedy writers, Bro, but the they sequel do. humor is ill placed and oh, for sure, yes. it just is. Yes. it just is. Yes. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm good with it, but I won't dispute why people don't like it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Star Wars. All right, this is the this is the payoff, everyone. Right. You need a trilogy of the Sith, Lord. Sorry, 
That's what you yeah. gotta do. You gotta start the reset story. You got you get off the Jedi's. Give me the Siths. Make it dark. Make it whatever. Three three trilogies. Let's do the Rise of the Sith. Yep. Three stories. I agree one hundred percent. Like I'm I, hoping that announcement this month is exactly that. Yeah. Some Knights of the Old Republic and how the Sith that yeah. lost twenty Jedi. Yes. And how that shit. I came. think that's yep. brilliant. I and think that's how, brilliant. How they came to be. Yeah. I totally agree. That's brilliant. Okay. Yep. So yeah, that, that was just my thoughts on that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, happy to, happy to be done with it. Are you gonna try it again though? When when you get the when the DVD comes out, you're gonna get it for a little Mikey. You're gonna nah, watch it if again, it comes or? in a in a package, I mean, <laughs> hey, when I saw the Emperor, it reminded me of Captain Eel. By the way, when, yeah, when yeah, he was, it, was hooked up, sure. you know what I mean. Maybe that was a it's little subliminal, yeah, little yeah, subliminal. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you did the, you did get the Frankenstein, the the horror elements, the the that's you know when the, it's like. Like the, the lightning and you see his face briefly, that shit like that, that didn't do nothing for you as a horror guy? I didn't do much for me, man. No. I did. Cool. I'm probably biased at this point. I'm already turned, man. You know, I'm, but um, it was probably better than eight to me. Probably, you know. Was it better than the, the uh, holiday special? Holiday special is fucking amazing. You hated the holiday special. Oh, he like, he loves it. horrible movies, and he couldn't even finish the hor- the the holiday special. <laughs> have you, you ever heard it? of the Star and Wars holiday special? You know it's shit. If oh, I if I'm like oh, this is whack. The only redeeming value of that holiday special was the Boba Fett cartoon. Right. Okay. So in 1979, or it was a 78. It, it, was 70, it might have been 77. There was there was a holiday special. We're gonna end it on the holiday special. <laughs> And do you really want to end? Hey, do you really want to end in holiday special? Fuck it. Uh, it is probably the worst thing. It makes all of them look like uh, the Empire Strikes Back. It is the worst thing. Like if George Lucas said, he, if he had the time and the money, he would hunt down every copy of it and smash it with a baseball bat. It's that bad. It's really YouTube bad. It. YouTube it. Holiday Star Wars. Yeah. I when I watch it, I feel like I'm watching a snuff film. It's that <laughs> fucking bad, dude. The Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Like, that's okay. I know we can talk hours. I can talk hours yeah, on I that. Talk hours. I want so... the Bill Burr action figure. That dude is dope. I yeah. want to go to Space Boston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's just perfect show. I have not one. I have any. I haven't any complaints. I just watch it. And the my complaint is it's 20, 40, 30 minutes, and that's just yeah. selfishness. But right, other than right. that, I have no complaints. I love it. It it kind of hurt my feelings because you know Boba Fett's not a real Mandalorian, and I was a giant Boba Fett fan all my life. But it brought back the love of the Mandalorian, and it's just to see him get the the backpack at the end. Oh, it was just. He's not a real perfect. Mandalorian? Boba Fett? No, him and no. his father were. They, Neither they, is the Mando, really. Well, yeah, but don't break it down. So, to me, Mandalorian. Okay, so. Oh, you no, no, to, the oh, Boba Fett. Thing. The Boba Fett. Oh, yeah. So, in the Clone Wars cartoon, there's a big storyline that takes place on the planet of Mandalore, right? And in that couple episodes, they explain how Jango Fett is not a Mandalorian. Oh, wow. Okay. That he just, he acquired, he don't know where he got the armor. It broke my heart, not. bro. And it was even real Mandalorian armor, some of it. It was... He killed somebody. Did he kill somebody and stole the armor? They don't know. You, oh. you, they don't say, all, all they say is that he's not a Mandalorian and that he has the armor, but... But he's just not. He's now, not what do you Man- think of the show itself? So, the show itself is brilliant. It, again, this is going to go back to the same thing I'm talking about. And every time that Star Wars gets great is There's when they bring in the Western yep. shit. The show's a goddamn Western show it with totally a bounty is. hunter. There's yep. nothing... You, it could t- it's just like it's just like the solo movie. Yep. A train yeah. heist, right? The, it, yep. This is the same. It's the same same thing. Yeah. They did and, the. They made the Jawas the best they ever been. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That you know episode what? with the Jawas have never been better. They than expand. They, were in that they expand on little details that we want to know about without back in the day. Yeah. Exactly, man. And that's what makes it so dope. Like you can do that in a TV show format, and they don't overstay its welcome. It just you know it just gives you enough to be like. I'm good now. Right. Thank right. you for answering yep. that. Or little extension of scenes. You know, extension yes. of seeing their machines and all that yes. kind of shit, dude. Yeah, the IG. I was not expecting any force in this show at all. Right. And then to bring in this baby Yoda, right. it was like, wow, yeah. you brought in the fantasy element into my Western, and this is it's exactly just, what I it needed. so well. Yeah. The species yeah. of, of Yoda, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah we're going to find out. I think in episode. I think it is two. Baby Yoda. I think because they because they were they knew it was cloned because the empire the empire is looking for it. So we know at some point there's clones out there. And we also know from the prequels yeah. the emperor was dabbling in cloning anyway. So it is some it had to be one of his continu- contingency plans at yeah. some somewhere or another. Yeah. So the other thing too, real quick is um, shit. I lost my train of thought. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Nope. I just want to give shout outs to uh, channels like uh, Den of Nerd. Doomcock and uh, world class bullshitters. And, you know, in terms of you know speaking about Star Wars and Star Wars fans, different opinions and all that. Those are the channels I watch. And you know, I know back in the day, in hip hop, you know, artists would give shout outs to other artists they were fans of. And I just want to give shout outs to them. 
Okay. You know, also a special shout out to to Middleman and f- you know, and for Mike for having me here. All right. Um, Spawn and Joe, of course, the homies. It's always been a pleasure. Yes, sir. One thing, if we go back and edit this and put it right before he yeah. says this, back to Mando. So <laughs> this, uh, there's one point I wanted to bring up about Mando that my brother brought up that what? I thought was absolutely brilliant, right? He said, everybody's saying, oh, it's Star Wars again. It's Star Wars again. But you know what? It's not. The, the Mando is actually something brand fucking new. Right. Like the, the scene where the stormtroopers are missing – where they're trying to shoot something. And oh, they yeah. They can't. That, that is probably the furthest removed away from Star Wars Star Wars has ever been. Right. But it fucking works somehow. Right. And, and I just think it's a it's a, it's a a good point if people say, oh, Star Wars is back and Star Wars is back. No, no, no. This is something new. Right. Yeah. But for whatever reason, its flavor is just, it's right there. It's right. what you need. Anyway, that's what it, I wanted it's, to say. It's written well. What would you think of, of Mandalorian? And, I love and, it. Dave Filion and... Um, John Favreau. John Favreau are are great, and you know what? It shows that the TV format works. The writing on it is oh, so incredible, brilliant. man! Yeah, right, it's just so well done. I mean, it just gets better every episode. It builds on it. Like some people had a problem with episode five, and they were like, "Oh, that was kind of." I'm like, oh, "What are you watching?" Like everything the slower, was just the slower episodes. I love those. The slower here's, here's, here's you thing. Know what I mean? With the TV format, with the slower episodes, you get to know the character a little bit more. It gives it time to breathe, to you can right. get a, get a little bit more. Of who he is, and not only that, they took a lot of characters from the background of like Empire Strikes Back and 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 uh, like toys expands on them, expands uh, yeah, on them. toys that weren't in the movie that they brought into the the canon, and even like there's like the little uh, you know the Nick Nolte's character, he yeah, was, like, the little yeah, big guy no, from yeah. Uh, yeah, so those little things that he rides, those were from the Ewok movies, you know what I'm saying, and then like that prod that uh, the the Mandalorian has. That is from the Star Wars holiday uh, special. Wow. Yeah. And then when he says Force, uh, no, not Force Day, um, Life Day, Life Day. That's from the holiday Star Wars holiday. Also, special. too, the the there's so he a, brought that he can the safe the safe that's holding the Beskar tabs that he pays to the Mandalorian. Yeah, right. That's an ice cream maker. So in Empire Strikes Back, when when Lando tells everybody in Bespin evacuate the city immediately, right. and people start running. There's a dude running around there holding an ice cream maker, and for years people are like. Why the fuck is this guy holding the ice cream maker <laughs> right. in Bespin as he's running out, right? So the, the, it was a it was an in joke, like you know, it looks spacey or whatever. And then this show fucking Amazing. explains it. Right. It's a goddamn safe that you put things in. Yeah, how so dope it, is that? So how it was just that? it completely, you know, yeah. it, it it's the little shit of that show that like that that like makes it. it pristine it, it right. makes it real it, ge- it gives relevance to all these little details yeah. it makes it like hey this really does exist in this world it polishes yeah. it it totally does plus Carl Weathers is in it he's Carl Weathers yeah, exactly. better, you know and so does my man from Breaking Bad. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. G- 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 whatever his name is. Gianni Gennario from Do the Right oh, Thing. Gian oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do the Right Thing. Yeah. Bugging out. Yeah. And he b- bugged out with a black lightsaber. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, Giancarlo yeah. Esposito. Yes. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm just excited. I can't wait for uh, season two. I can't wait for season uh, seven of The Clone Wars. It's going to be dope. Cool, man. Well, hey, we're going to have to end this because we all can right, go brother. all day, all night. Yes. So, hey, appreciate you, Spawn, for coming always, out. Always, always, always. Joe. Thanks for having me. Vito. Thanks for having us. And be on the lookout Thanks. for Smill Mainly. It's a podcast that Spawn and I do with, with the other brothers. Yep. Right. We also have Joe on there, too, occasionally when it comes to anything Star Wars related. This is our man that we go to. <laughs> this is our Star Wars expert. <laughs> That's right. And thank all you, right, Anderson. Yo. Yo, yo. Producer. Man, power Lord. Annabelle for chilling in the corner. <laughs> Um, like baby Yoda so <laughs> yeah anyways appreciate it man and uh, thanks for joining us for this hybrid episode peace peace, peace. thank you peace